If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, outdoors people, and people who stumbled up on paranormal or haunted woods, and forests, what creepy things have you experienced out there? We lived in a rental with a huge backyard that was very, very dark at night. I had gone out to the garage to smoke, and I was standing in an open doorway, looking into the pitch black backyard. I heard, very clearly, my oldest daughter's voice say, Mama? And she sounded like she was standing about 30 yards away, and her tone was very frightened and distressed. The hair on my neck stood up, and I almost ran into the dark to find her, screeching her name, when I heard her answering me from inside her bedroom through her open window. I got really freaked out and went inside and asked her if she had called for me, and she said she'd been listening to music with her earbuds and studying when she heard me screaming her name from the open garage door. The way the hair on my neck stood up is something I have never experienced before or since, and I never stood in that doorway to smoke without having the backyard floodlights on ever again. More Western New York, near Rochester. I, 27, female, live in a small town in North Italy, in a valley between our typical old mountains, so just behind my home, lots of hikes start. I always lived here, and I like mountains. Plus, I'm getting in shape, so the terrain is ideal, especially because I'm really familiar with it. So, last summer, I was walking my usual route when I thought I could try to have a short hike before sunset and took a route. I was with my dog, a well-trained Spitz, a nice company with good instincts that I trust. He's a working dog more than a pet, despite his size. So we took the path and started making our way up, nice and relaxed but active as we didn't have too much light time left. I just figured that if the light went out, I'd just turn around and head home, there were no chances of getting lost, etc. Woods immediately engulf us, they're pretty dense, but that's the norm. Not even 15 minutes of walking, and I'm paralyzed by this overwhelming sense of dread. The woods are completely silent. My skin crawls up just thinking about it. Even my dog stops, anxious. I just couldn't understand what was scaring me so much in the sudden silence. I couldn't move a muscle. I've read the gift of fear, and the only time I didn't listen to my guts, I lost my spleen in an accident. I was so wide-eyed and hyper-alert that I forced myself to move and nope out of there. It was like my brain was screaming, if you stay here, you'll die. Walking back, I couldn't stop the urge to continuously look behind me. At some point, I was practically running, and I kept thinking that if I sprained an ankle there, I would die. The dog seemed relieved when we had turned back, and he kept looking behind too. When we finally made it out of the woods and back on the road, I felt a wave of relief and ran all the way back home for the adrenaline I had. To this day, I don't know what happened, and I haven't gone back. When I was a child, I vividly remembered this, and I can't even explain it now, so it might sound weird. Nobody believes me but my dad, because he believes in paranormal stuff. But when I was like, maybe 10, I was messing around in the woods behind my house when I tripped and fell over a route down a small embankment into the street. It wasn't usually a busy street, but I remember seeing a car coming around the bend, a sharp turn on a hill, and being like, OSHT, it's going to hit me. And then I saw this, like, dude, made of glass, over top of me? And then a branch fell right on the hood of the car, it came around the turn, and they braked. They would have hit me otherwise, as for the guy, he was just standing over me, looking down at me, kind of interested, like when you see a penny on the sidewalk. He was an older man, and I could see clean through him. He was sort of green and blue. I don't know how to explain it. And looked like he was wearing a fur coat with one hand tucked into the front and the other arm kind of black and withered. It looked like wood. Hanging down to the side without a sleeve. The memory is pretty clear, I have autism with photographic memory, but the clarity I can see him with is still so uncanny to me to this day. Is this some sort of entity? Any clue as to what this guy could be? Is he known? I'm kind of new to researching this, but it's been bothering me for ages. Whatever he was saved my life most likely, and I don't know what he even is. This is 100% true and took place 32 years ago, when I was 9 years old. To set the scene, it was the summer holidays in England, and me and my friend Chris were out playing near the old windmill. It was in a farmer's field next to a dilapidated farmhouse, long since abandoned. It was a couple of miles, or so, from where we lived. The farmer still used the stalls and stables as storage, keeping the occasional pig in them. The windmill itself was just an empty shell with metal steps winding up inside it and a walkway high up going from one side to the other. The farmhouse looked as though it hadn't been used since the 1930s. There was only one way in and out. Dusty, broken down furniture was in most rooms, and in the first room you entered, there was a four-post bed with ragged material hanging in shreds from the top and an old, rolled up, 
thin mattress at the base. We used to go in and play around, climbing up to the second floor as the stairs were destroyed, etc. Anyhow, on to what actually happened. We'd been playing around in the house and walked out past the bed. We sat on the outside wall and were feeding a pig an apple. I looked behind me, and there was the four-poster bed in all its glory. It was completely made with a fresh quilt, polished wood, and billowing lace curtains around its frame. In the middle of the bed, sat up against some pillows, was a skeleton. It was dressed in a blue and white striped nightgown and matching nightcap. It turned its head to look in my direction. Now obviously, this was incredibly startling, we had literally been in that room only 60 seconds before, and as I said, it was a few miles from anywhere. So no one could have been playing a trick. I was literally struck dumb with terror. I was tapping Chris on the shoulder to get his attention, as he was happily still feeding the pig. I turned to try and talk to him, and I managed to get him to turn around. The smashed window looking into the room was now fully glazed, and there filling its frame was the skeleton. It was looking directly at us, yes, I'm aware it had no eyeballs, but it was facing in our direction. It then opened its mouth and pointed at us, and that broke the spell. We both screamed at the top of our lungs and sprinted as fast as we could all the way back to my house. Through fields of stinging nettles despite wearing shorts and the long distance home. Only stopping when we got in and told my mother all about what happened. I refused to go near that place again for over 15 years and only went back with a group of friends so that I felt safe. The site where it stood has since been developed into a supermarket, and as far as I'm aware, no paranormal activity has been reported. I don't know what I saw that day, if it was a ghost, a time slip, or something completely different, but I know what I saw, and my story has not changed a bit in 32 years. This is a story that I have told many times and had no insight into. I am not a believer in the paranormal, but nothing else fits the bill. It happened roughly 10 years ago. I grew up on a mountain, surrounded by forest. My siblings and I were always out hiking and playing in the woods. The only real threats were things like cougars, bears, etc. We were always vigilant and took our dog with us as well for safety. When this happened, I had been living on the mountain for nearly 15 years and knew every nook and cranny of the place. I knew the sounds of all the animals, what they were, and what each plant was. One winter, I was taking care of a neighbor's dog while they were on vacation. I had been there many times before, as I babysat for them for years and had dogs sat before. It's dark outside and slippery from the snow or ice, so my dad offers to drive me, the houses are far apart here, and the walk would have been over an hour. My younger sister came along because she was bored and wanted to meet the dog. We get to the house, and my dad stays in the car to keep it running and warm while my sister and I head to the garage where the dog was staying, don't worry, it was heated. The dog was kind of old, so she went outside, did her thing, and then immediately ran back inside. I thought nothing of it, given all the snow. My sister and I are locking up when we hear something weird. We pause and look at each other while listening. It is unlike anything I've ever heard before. The only way I can describe it was wailing. Like spirits being dragged to hell. It sounded like multiple voices, all wailing in unison. My blood ran cold. I'd never been so shocked or scared in my life. It only lasted a few seconds. Mind you, middle of the woods. I recall hearing something that sounded like tire screeching just after this and, moments later, an ambulance siren. I don't know that any of the sounds were related, but it's worth mentioning. My sister and I ran back to the truck as fast as possible, absolutely chilled to the bone from the sound. It was not a cougar, it was not a bird. It came from the woods, where there were no houses or people. I know all the sounds of the forest, and that was not one of them. I have yet to find anyone else with this experience. Every year or so, I ask my sister if she remembers, because it feels like a bad dream. She recalls it every time. She is much more a cynic than I am, but she still can't figure out what happened. We don't like to talk about it much, for some reason. Maybe because we can't make sense of it. I would love some input on this. I promise you, this was not an animal. I cannot stress that enough. Everyone always suggests it, and I know for a fact that it was not an animal maybe not even a human. So the other day, I remembered a memory where my partner and I were driving through a forest near our home. For some reason, we stopped randomly on the side of the road and got out of the car to walk in the forest. We had to climb over a small farm fence, and we got to this ghost gum with a white trunk. There was a large branch broken off with huge scratches that looked like fingernail scratches from a giant hand. They were so deep that the tree was bleeding sap that had dried. The creepy thing was that the hand would have to be huge. We were creeped out and asked each other, maybe someone scratched these markings with a tool? But I questioned, why would someone randomly come into this random forest to scratch a tree? 
So I remembered this and went to my partner and said, remember that time when? And he flat out denied that ever happened. He says it sounds like a dream. I recall it as a memory. I recall clambering over the fence and getting snagged. I remember the time of year when it was cold and damp. This was no dream. It all started about nine years ago when the airport near my parents' house had plans for expanding. I live in northern Michigan, and it's pretty much wooded anywhere outside of town. The airport finally started clearing the land, and within the first week, they discovered 16 mounds. They stopped the clearing until they figured out what the mounds were. A town historian figured out that the mounds were actual Indian burial grounds, with a Chippewa chief buried there. The airport stopped the expansion plans and stopped clearing the land. A few of the neighbors thought it would be a good idea to have a shaman, or a native of the tribe, bless the graves. They found a Chippewa shaman to bless all the graves and found out a little bit more about the chief that was buried there. I never found out his name, but I know that he was buried with a bare skin and skull. That's all I knew. A couple years go by, I'm in my senior year of high school, and it's near the end of the school year. My parents went out of town for the weekend, so as any 18-year-old kid would do, I invited three close friends over for a small party. We had a few drinks and started talking about a few paranormal stories. It then came to mind that we could have a little adventure and take a Ouija board down to the burial grounds. We all walked down there, which only took about 5 minutes. We asked very basic questions. We were out there for about a solid 20 minutes, and nothing happened. We walked back to my parents' house, put the Ouija board back in the box, and put it up in the open closet in my room. We continued to party and play games. The rest of the night went on, and a few more friends ended up showing up. It was about 3 a.m. at this point, and a few of my friends had passed out for the night. It was just my buddy Dillian, and I was still awake when we heard a loud bang come from my bedroom just down the hall. We got up and went to check it out. My Ouija board was sitting right in the middle of my room on the floor. I put it back in the box, and I haven't touched it since. It's been five years. My dad was always a pretty interesting person and has had a shitload of paranormal experiences that have happened in his life. Here is my favorite story from when he was a kid. My dad grew up in the era of the late 1960s, he was raised in a pretty rural part of Texas, about a two to three hour drive north of Houston. My grandpa was a big fan of hunting, and so was my dad. One day, when he was like 12 to 13 years old, he woke up before dawn to get ready to go hunting with his brother, who was about a year younger than him. My dad went to wake up my uncle but didn't budge. So my dad said, duck it, I'll go alone. He leaves the house and ventures into the woods with a flashlight, his rifle, and some trail mix. He walked for a while, getting to where the sun was coming up, and no longer needed the flashlight. After about 30 minutes of walking, he felt a sudden chill. It seemed like something was watching him. He gripped his gun and looked all over. When he found nothing, he kept walking. Suddenly, he heard a twig snap. Now here is where it starts to get creepy. My dad was standing still, waiting and listening. Then it started. He could hear someone laughing, it sounded far away, but the laugh chilled him to the bone. Thinking it was his brother, he called out to him and told him to stop ducking around before he shot him, yet there was no response. Only soft laughter. So my dad got scared and started walking back toward the house. Now he was quite a distance away, like at least an hour of walking. As he walked, he could hear the laughter, it sounded much closer. He started to jog, but the faster the moves, the closer the laughs got. He got angry and started yelling that whoever was following and laughing needed to stop and that he was armed. The laughs became hysterical and unsettling, coming from all around him. The laughter stopped, and a deep voice said, I'm going to get you. This scared the shit out of my dad, and he took off running, dropping his snack and flashlight. The hysterical and aggressive laughter started back again and was so loud that my dad dropped to his knees and covered his ears. He felt all this pressure around him, and he felt like the world was getting darker. He summed up all his courage and pulled the trigger on his rifle. A single gunshot silenced the laughter. Whatever was chasing him was gone. He quickly got his SHT together and bolted. He didn't stop running until he got to the porch of my grandparents' house. He told his dad what had happened, and my grandpa told him to never go into the woods alone. The woods hold more secrets than he knows. My dad continued to go into the woods to hunt, but never alone. Even when he was an old man, he would go hunting in those same woods, but never alone. I'm an avid hiker and backpacker. Most of the time, I hike by myself, and I sleep out in the woods by myself. I have spent a good amount of time in the backcountry, and up until this, I would have never claimed to have experienced anything even remotely paranormal. Ticks are the real scary monsters. This past weekend, I set out for a solo hike in the Catskill Mountains in New York. 
When I arrived at the trailhead, two other hikers, not together, also pulled up. This area has no marked trails, so any landmark worth getting to is technically a bushwhack. After some friendly salutations, the three of us established that we had generally similar itineraries and decided to head up to the highlands together. Eventually, one of the guys fell behind, and after waiting for a bit, I started addressing the other gentleman as, hike bro, and I figured he changed his plans, so we pushed on. We summited two peaks together and then decided to extend the trip a bit in search of an 80-year-old plane crash that is situated in a very rugged area, in between the ridge lines of the peaks we bagged. After some more, heavier bushwhacking, we found the wreck. I knew that people had died in the crash, but I have read about a number of plane crashes in the Catskills, and at the time, I didn't remember the exact details of this particular relic. I just knew it was there. It's certainly a somber experience when you happen on any place you know somebody took their last breath, especially in such a violent way, but besides just a general feeling of sympathy and melancholy, I can't say I felt any sort of eerie vibes. It was a beautiful day, and the post-hike beer was the next waypoint. Hike bro and I silently walked around the wreck, taking pictures and videos and being careful not to touch anything. Our individual wanderings had put us about 25 to 30 yards away from each other, and in between us was a water drainage, so we couldn't really hear each other, even if we wanted to talk. We explored in continued silence for about 20 minutes, when I closed my camera. As soon as my viewfinder snapped into the camera body, I heard a deep male voice, that did not sound like hike bro, say, nice shot. The best way I can describe the timbre of the voice is like a compressed, amplified whisper. It's almost like Christian Bale's Batman, but with more tonal quality and sort of a digital texture to it. It sounded close, but also like it was in surround sound. The woods can do some really funky things with sound. We are all very rooted in good old-fashioned science, especially when we are on the side of a mountain, in between two ridge lines, and next to a drainage. I just assumed it was somebody and looked up from the direction I thought it came, half expecting to see the other hiker we had been separated from earlier. We had discussed the plane crash on our way up, so I thought it was him just being cute. He was not there. Nobody else was either, in any direction. Hike bro was down the ridge a bit, and he was busy framing a shot. He was now about 40 yards away from me. I made my way to him and asked if he had said something. He had not. To be honest, the creepy still didn't set in until about 10 minutes later. I just figured it was someone's voice carrying it from somewhere up the ridgeline above us. But as we made our way back to the more established herd path, the more I thought about it, the more creep creeped in. I distinctively heard nice shot. I would swear by it to anyone, on anything. As we got back to easier ground, Hike Bro filled me in on the specific details of the plane crash. Three people who were on board for military training after World War II have gone missing. They went off course in bad weather. Two of their remains were found, one never was. I never shared what I heard with Hike Bro. I don't think anyone wants to walk out of the woods with a total stranger spewing ghost stories in real time. Honestly, I still feel like there's got to be an explanation, but I just can't get over the nice shot part especially right as I closed my camera. We live in a rural area, and there are houses close to mine. We have a puppy, so one of us will take him out. About a month ago, I took him out, and while we were out there, I heard my boyfriend's voice say my name, however, he was not outside. He has had a similar experience recently where his voice whistled and called my puppy. What is this, and what do we do? How do we get rid of it? This is a true story, and it took place in the late 1970s and early 1980s. So I was roughly six when this happened. My grandparents went on a weekend trip and returned to their home. It snowed while they were gone. When they entered their home, they noticed things were tossed and moved about. It became clear to them that someone invaded their house while they were gone. As they looked around, they began to notice that nothing was actually taken. My grandpa had a safe in the spare room, which was found open. There was cash and jewelry nearby, but none of that was taken. They kept important documents in that safe. They noticed their marriage certificate was missing. Still confused, my grandpa made his way to the back door, which was partially opened. He opened it, and when exiting, you step onto a back porch, which extends to a large open backyard. He noticed prints in the snow immediately. It's as though they exited the back door and walked into the yard. He also noticed that the prints didn't appear human. They resembled hoof prints but seemed human in size. They lived in Illinois, and they only had small animals like squirrels, deer, and raccoons in the area. So definitely not animal prints. He followed the tracks out to the backyard, where they completely stopped right in the middle. The yard was fenced in. But the prints completely ended, as if whatever this thing was broke into their home, stole their marriage certificate, 
and completely disappeared while walking or flew away. Grandpa was always a no-nonsense, no BS World War II veteran. My grandma was the same. I am never the type of person to play pranks or even joke about anything. To see them so baffled and scared was something that will always stay with me. We drove to their home later that day with my dad. They lived in a smaller, all one-story home. Dad took a look and went up there to find clues. But he found the prints up there too. The marriage certificate was never found. They eventually moved from the home. They lived in four other homes in that general area and experienced other things. It's like it followed them. At one of their new homes, they heard their doorbell ring at 3 a.m. They woke up, and Grandma opened the door to see a black figure that appeared human but was see-through. She screamed and quickly shut the door. Grandpa quickly grabbed a fireplace poker and swung open the door, and this thing totally disappeared. In the short amount of time he took to open the door, this figure, if it were human, couldn't have gone too far. There was nowhere for it to hide. When my father grew up, he also experienced a lot of strange things. At about 10.15 p.m. less than a week ago, I was driving north along I-87, very near Lake George, with my little sister. There weren't many people on the two-lane stretch, but there were some sets of headlights behind us. We were driving for only 15 minutes before I started seeing black wisps dart and curl across the first few feet of the lane to my left, almost like more corporeal smoke reaching out of the woods. At first, I thought they were just shadows and the late-night headlights playing tricks on me, but the more I looked, the more inconsistent they became and the more I saw that they were solid and more of a very dark grey than the solid black you'd associate with shadows. And the fact that they were only appearing on the left side of the road and not on the right was particularly unsettling. After two minutes of seeing these things, I mentioned them to my sister and asked if she saw them too. She messed with me a bit and said, oh yeah, spooky shit ooh, so I generally ignored any more input from her based on principle. They disappeared as soon as we took our exit, and we didn't see anything remotely similar to them for the rest of our drive. I love the paranormal, but I wouldn't exactly call myself a wholehearted believer. This experience was a bit surreal and strange for me. I would normally brush it off as a trick of the light, but my sister just confessed to me over text that even though she was messing with me at the time, it's because she was a little freaked out since she saw a couple too. I suspect she saw fewer since she was further away from the lane where they appeared. Anyway, what do you guys think? Paranormal, spiritual, or just headlights? Let me know because I have to drive up there again on Thursday night, and this time, I'm going to be alone. So when I was younger, I encountered an entity that I've never really found an explanation for. I kind of forgot about it until I was discussing paranormal experiences with some friends the other day. One of them told me to ask here, so I thought I might as well. The details are a little fuzzy as this was almost 10 years ago, but I remember some parts quite vividly in my mind when I think about them. When I was around 10 to 11, I was on a camp out with my scout troop. We stayed in this block with bunk beds that backed onto a huge forest. In our free time, we would run around this forest and play tag, hide and seek, etc., but one of the days we saw something eerie. We came to a ditch with big banks on either side, about a 15-minute walk into the forest. We decided to sit on one side of the banks and talk about whatever popular video game or TV show was at that time. One of my friends pointed into the tree line on the other side of the bank and asked us to look. I remember seeing nothing at first, but some of the other boys quietly pointed to the tree until my eyes caught it. This thing had the shape of a man but was definitely around 7 feet. I'm way taller than any adult I've ever seen. It was wearing no clothes, and I could barely make out any features. I know it sounds silly, but the best comparison I can make is to a slender man who is much more human in stature and proportions. It slowly trudged through the tree line until it disappeared behind a thick trunk. Some friends have said maybe skinwalkers or ghosts, but I'm not sure, any ideas would be cool. Okay, so I'm not really sure what this could be, but I live in northern Michigan, which is pretty wooded and has lots of small forests where I live. One of them is my dog. Whenever we go for a walk at night, if I don't keep him in my direct line of sight, he will disappear, and no matter how much I call or anything, I can't find him. But after me or my partner gets distressed enough, he reappears in odd places we've already searched within the last minute or two. I don't know what paranormal creature likes to take pets, but any insight would be helpful. Last month, I was at a good friend's place near Usingen, Taunus, in Germany. We had a few beers and watched some cheesy horror movies until he told me about their local paranormal hotspot called Jammer Heck, Weeping Hedge, a place where, if I recall correctly, many kids died in a blizzard before the first WW. Many people said that they felt something up there, and so my friend and I walked to the place. TBH, 
I had nothing much to say when I walked through that silent forest. I didn't hear the weeping, legend says that you can hear it from 0 am to 3 am, or the ghastly eyes in the dark except for a few deer, but one thing was definitely off, as we were having a break after walking for 4 hours, I sat on a tree stump and gazed in the forest. Suddenly, a red fog localized between two trees started whirling around and vanished as quickly as it appeared. I directly checked Google Maps to see if there was a road in front of us where a car could cause a red light, but there wasn't one. I need to go up there again and search for this fog thing. Bonus creeps, at the jammer heck, the children gathered to hide from the snowstorm that had driven them off the path. They froze upon that mountain, and they were only found as the harsh winter was over. Four months, needless to say, these woods are said to be cursed. I'm a skeptic of the supernatural and never put much stock in ghosts or spirits. I do think aliens are real and could rationally exist through biological processes. My kids have had experiences in each house we have lived in. I always wrote it off as an overactive imagination. So for a little over a year, my youngest son has been talking to us about the baby in his room. He is only two, and he will be three soon. It started when he first started talking. He would wake up screaming for us, saying that the baby in his room was trying to get him. He would be terrified, and it would take a long time to get him calmed and back to sleep. My wife and I wrote this off as being overstimulated by something he saw on TV. He seemed to calm down, only mentioning his friend every so often, but he stopped waking up terrified, so we thought we were past it. Recently, though, as he has gotten more articulate, he is bringing up details out of nowhere that we are having a hard time explaining. Things like the description of this thing, its favorite things, where it comes from, and how it comes into the room. Some of these details, we cannot figure out how we would get this information. The baby is naked and smaller than him, and it can fly with wings. Its favorite food is dates, and it likes to drink milk. We are a middle-class white family, and the only time I've even heard of dates was in Indiana Jones, which he has never seen. He says it flies into his room from the window and talks to him. He refuses to elaborate on what it wants and what they talk about. He says it lives in the woods, and it is never present during the day, like when he is playing with his toys. If it were an imaginary friend, I would have thought he would be playing with it when he was playing. I'm coming here because I'm starting to see things I can't explain and hear things that do not make sense. Last week, I was out doing yard work, and he had been playing with a clothes hanger like a grappling hook. When I came back inside through the front door, I found the hanger standing up by itself, about two feet away from the door. He was upstairs playing, and no one was around. I thought it was strange and asked my wife how the heck he picked it up and put it away. The next day, as I was walking from my kitchen to the bedroom, I saw motion out of my peripheral. It was moving fast, and when I turned my head, I saw a shadow figure flying near the ceiling, going from the bar in the kitchen, past a hanging light fixture, and through the wall just above the glass door leading to the deck. The best way I can describe it is as a damn fairy. It was about 8 inches tall with butterfly-like wings. The top wings were more lobed, but the bottom wings were kind of pointed. At this point, I turn around to my wife to ask if she just saw that. She had her back to it, so she didn't see anything. After this incident, I reconsidered the clothes hanger. I tried for nearly an hour to make this damn thing stand up. I was hoping it was curved or bent in a way to make it stand up or that there was a spot in the hardwood floor that was perfect for it to nestle into. I could not replicate it. I asked my son what he did or if he even did it. He said he sang to it, and his friend made it stand up. The only thing I know about fairies is from movies. I believe in things that could possibly exist, like aliens or Bigfoot. I do not think spirits are real. All this is making me reevaluate things, and everything I've researched about these things from folklore is not pleasant. Has everyone seen anything similar or had any experience with this type of thing? Back in. I'd say it was 2014 or 2015, I don't remember exactly since it's been so many years. I was on a school camping trip in 6th grade. This trip was for the school's 6th and 7th grades. One thing we did was play a game every night. Flashlight tag, sardines, etc. One night, we played what the adults called Mission Impossible. Our goal was to get an already lit up glow stick into a bucket. It sounds simple but the catch was that the bucket was guarded by adults in a clearing somewhere in the woods. I'm not sure where exactly it was, I never could find it. But anyway, a bunch of us kids kept sneakily breaking the no hiding the glow stick in your pockets or clothes. So I had no clue where anyone was when we were about halfway through the time we were told the game would run. Right by the cabins, there was this smaller field, that's where I was. Three quarter sides were trees, and my back was to the cabins. I had resorted to rolling an army crawling about a third of the way across the field since I heard adults nearby and my classmates screaming, 
I had a bunch of extremely femme girls in my class who liked to scream when it fit the situation. So by the time I got halfway across, I needed to rest for a couple minutes. We have probably 20 minutes left, so I figured I had time. I had my right side facing the cabins at this point, lying on my stomach. I looked up, expecting to see just the trees, but I saw a white oval shape. Less of a perfect oval and more of the face you expect from a face. I know, I probably sound really insane to say I saw the Slender Man, an entity that most of humanity agree is fiction. But honestly, the biggest reason I believe that is what or who I actually saw is because of some of the things possible in this world. Egregores, for example, is an entity that, if enough people believe in it, becomes real in a way. I'm more than positive that if Slender Man isn't real as just a natural part of this reality, then an egregore with his appearance is what I saw that night. A couple years ago, I'd said it was Slender Man, no questions were asked. But I've learned a lot. So I'm curious to see what anyone who knows about egregores thinks about this encounter. I haven't seen whatever it was since, but I still have the encounter to thank for being what got me interested in the paranormal. I want to preface this by saying I lived in a house that had what I would consider light paranormal activity for three years. I recently moved in with my boyfriend and his parents about six weeks ago. They live on the East Coast, and I've been in California for the past 11 plus years. I live in the basement, alone. I spend most of my time down there, as it's fully finished, and I value my space and alone time. I stayed here for a few months in 2018, and my boyfriend and I had an experience where we heard a clear voice speaking to us. He insists that it was not anything paranormal and that it must have been someone outside. His house is out in the woods, and there are no neighbors within a quarter mile. This experience took place at about 2.30 in the morning. That was the only experience I had during the four months I was there, and I didn't have any when I was back in California. I've had multiple, albeit small, experiences since moving back. I've heard voices, heard footsteps, and had some electronics malfunction. Tonight I went into my bedroom to change, and when I went to open the door, it was locked. I don't believe I could have locked it without knowing. It is a turn lock, not a push, and I never locked the door in my bedroom. His parents assure me they've lived here for 40 years and have never had any experiences. I feel like I'm crazy in trying to explain these happenings. Please help me. So basically, me and my fiancé went to my friend's dad's slash uncle's pub slash restaurant and had a drink and something to eat. We left, and it wasn't dark yet, so we went to these woods, like five minutes away. We got there, and my fiancé froze. And she looked too anxious, so she went white. I was fine. I just said, let's go for a quick walk before it gets dark. So we got out and started walking down the path. The path was literally a straight line with crossroads every so often. I was completely fine but she was clearly anxious or paranoid about something and kept looking around and saying she didn't like it here. I started to freak out, like, why is she doing this? I carried on walking, and she said, can we go back? I have a bad feeling. We need to go, like now. I was so confused, which made me a little anxious as she wouldn't tell me what was wrong. After like 10 seconds of walking, I looked to my right and saw a silhouette of an adult standing on the side of the path. There are no clothes, no facial features, and nothing to resemble a human. I wasn't seeing things. I saw it. And my heart sank. You know that cold, heart-wrenching feeling you get? I went so pale and so cold. I couldn't stop shaking. It was ducked. Then we kept walking, and I was so paranoid that I kept looking behind us. We were getting close to the car, and she was nearly in tears. I got to the car, and it suddenly went pitch black outside, like it was bright, then next thing you know, it's dark. We drove out, and she said I didn't want to talk about it until I was out of this area. So we drove out of the area, and then I said to her, did you see something? And she said yeah and still looked pale as duck. Then I said I'd tell you what I saw first so that you knew I wasn't you. So I said what I saw, and she saw the exact same thing. But she saw it twice. And she described it exactly as it looked. It was kind of like Slender Man vibes. Honestly, it was the most duck thing I have ever experienced in my life. But. It gets worse. So then we got back to Crawley and parked up outside her house. I parked facing a wall, so the back end of my car had space for people to walk behind it. We were talking about it, and we kind of forgot about it. Then I randomly looked in my windshield mirror and saw someone walk really slowly behind the car. So I said to her, oh, there's someone behind this. But I couldn't finish my sentence as that person vanished. I was looking in my wing mirror to see the person walk past, but no one popped out on the other side. I got out and looked, and there was no one around us. My heart sank so deeply into my chest. I have never felt this petrified in my life. Then she saw someone walking next to the car, so I said, 
duck this, pulled out, and left. Then we drove out of the car park, and as soon as we did, we saw this woman walk out of her house holding her chest and staring at the sky, screaming as loud as she could. This is the first time something has happened to me, and I have so many questions. It was a pretty weird experience. The other night, I was staying at some cabins in Eustace, Maine, doing some work there. I woke up around 11.30 pm and noticed a weird, bright flying light. I figured it was a plane, but then a second later, there was another one pretty close to it. I sat up and saw the third one closer to the ground, just moving around. I got weirded out, grabbed my shotgun, and sat on the porch watching these lights, not knowing what the duck I was looking at, whether it was trespassers or some spooky shit. After about a minute, I saw another one dart by the cabin my father was staying in. Then I looked back over in the woods, and the first two were flying around each other. These looked like blue balls of light, similar to balls of lightning, but I figured there were too many of them to be that because of how rare they are, and there were no thunderstorms that night. It was downpouring and pitch black, so I decided it was safer to continue watching from the cabin. I watched for another 5 minutes before deciding to go back to bed. If anyone has any idea what I was looking at, that would be appreciated, I'm pretty ducking confused. I have had several paranormal experiences. Perhaps it runs in the family. I grew up in the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia. In a long, deep hollow. Superstition runs as deep as the hollows. You grow up with it. It's second nature, you don't think it's strange or weird because everyone believes it, everyone does it, and everyone has a story to tell. A willow branch will find water. You shiver, someone has walked on your grave. You put salt on window sills, blue bottles in trees, you knock on wood, and you always say, you aren't welcome here when you answer the door and no one is there. You don't question it, you just do it because it keeps you safe. Safe from what? Things, unexplained things. My mother grew up in an old house in the back of a place called the Cove. A long hollow, deep in the mountains. You won't find it on a map. It's a local name for a small part of the area. When she was a child, her blankets would be pulled off of her. She would say, I'm cold, and then it would stop. Footsteps used to stomp up the steps at night, until one night her father yelled out. You all ain't. You don't have to go to work, but I do. Stop all that stompin'. She said the footsteps stopped, and they never heard them again, at night. They eventually moved to another house. An old man moved in after them. The neighbors, a bit down the road, said the man came running to their house in the middle of the night, asking if he could sleep there. He said he wasn't staying in that house another night. He wouldn't say what happened to him, and he never went back to that house. My father claims he was followed by what he called the old woolly booger. I don't know what that may be, but I have heard my grandma talk about a woolly booger. She said it would scream at night where she lived as a child, which gave her the chills. Her father would pace the floor when they heard it screaming. My grandma said her father thought it was a bad omen when the woolly booger was screaming. My dad said he was walking home from the fair. He heard something behind him. It was a bright night, but he couldn't see anything. He kept walking and heard it again. He turned and saw a tall, dark shadow. He just knew it was up to no good, so he hightailed it out of there with the woolly booger following behind him the entire time. When I was little, we lived in an old home. It was over 100 years old. It didn't have a bathroom. We used an outhouse and washed in a basin. My mom called it a witch bath. There were two large bedrooms upstairs. One of those was mine. I can clearly recall talking to an older lady. We sat on my bed. She was telling me this was her bedroom at one time, and she was even born in that very room. She loved that house as much as I did, and I still do. I wasn't scared at all. She was my friend. I was later told there was no such woman, and it was all in my imagination. It wasn't. We used to play in the mountains. Once, we were swinging on a grapevine. That is what we called them. Those large, thick vines that grow up the trees. You cut it off at the bottom, hang on for dear life, take a run and swing out, and pray it doesn't break. It can be like flying if you find a good one that will swing out over the hill. We were swinging hard. We had found the perfect grapevine. You went out high into the sky, could almost touch the clouds, and saw the valley bottom. We kept seeing a house down at the bottom. But there wasn't a house there. Never had been. Maybe someone built it? Maybe it was new? Maybe we had never noticed it? We went to investigate, being the adventurous little mountain devils we were. We couldn't find it. I went back to swinging, saw the house, went searching, and couldn't find it. This happened several times. When we went home, each of us asked our parents. Each of us was told not to go to that house and to stop searching for it. We were forbidden. Never given an explanation for it. We didn't see the house again. 
my neighborhood has a history of paranormal experiences. We are at the edge of the woods that surround a reservoir. Underneath that reservoir is an old town 200 to 300 feet deep that was flooded in the 1800s. Inside those woods are many old structures that were spared from this flooding, many of which are graveyards that range from the late 1600s to the early 1900s. Needless to say, I've seen my fair share of paranormal activity, and I'm pretty used to it by now. But tonight was new. About two hours ago, I heard a distant but distinguishable singing. It sounded like what I imagine a siren would sound like, like the mermaid. It lasted about 20 seconds and stopped. I brushed it off as just another weird thing in my neighborhood, and I tried to go to sleep. Except tonight, something was off. It was driving me crazy to the point where it's 1am and I still can't sleep. And then I realized. The night is dead silent. I mean dead silent. There are no crickets, as usual. There is no wind, as usual. No night animals, no people sneaking out for a midnight drive, nothing. It's driving me crazy. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. I'm not sure if there's even an answer or anything to something like this, not like this is a question at all, but this is so strange. I live in northeast New Mexico. We are known to be a skinwalker hotspot. I've always heard the stories and joked about them, but I've been hearing sounds of howling, heavy breathing, and yipping out my window. However, when I look, there is nothing there. This has been going on for several months. It was never a bother to me until recently. A couple days ago, I heard the sounds inside my house, along with footsteps. I immediately thought it was an intruder, so I grabbed my signature and started making a sweep of the house. I checked every room but found nothing. My house is single story, and there is a small crawl space above the ceiling, but the only way to get into it is through an attic door that I keep locked. It couldn't have been a small animal. It sounded like it was at least 150 pounds. Animals near my house have different behavior than in Texas, the only other state I've lived in. Obviously, it's a different environment, but I used to see animals standing still in front of my doorbell. Just looking at it for up to several minutes. It has been about two months since this last happened, but when it did happen, it was around twice a month. In other instances, I've had squirrels climb on the sills and look through my windows. This happens near weekly, and just the other day I saw a hummingbird just chilling in front of my window for about 30 seconds. I have two dogs, Snoop and Riley. I started to keep them inside because they would start barking at random shit in the dark, and it would spook the cows and wake us up. I was hanging out with a friend. We were out on a walk after sitting for several hours watching TV. It's fairly dark outside, probably around 9 or 10 p.m., and he wanted to see my deer blind, as we are both into hunting. We walked out there and talked for a bit before starting our walk back. About one third of the way back, we started hearing my dogs barking, owls hooting, and horses nickering. It all started at the same time and ended at the same time. A little while later, there was rustling in the grass 40 feet in front of us, both me and my buddy noticed it. It looked pretty large, about the size of a bear, and only the back of it was exposed. It was dark and almost hairless. I started to back away slowly, and it stopped moving for a second before scurrying off into the woods. It did not have a tail, and I didn't get a good look at its head, but its body was kind of like a dog's. We made it back to the house and talked for a bit before he started his drive home. Is this a skinwalker? If so, what can I do to get rid of this kind of stuff? It's not good for the livestock, and to be honest, it scares the shite out of me. Since I was a kid, I was drawn to this abandoned farmhouse on the corner of the road leading to my house. It was about a block or two away from home, and we would pass it every time we would go to the store or the YMCA to swim. There was something so cool, majestic, and, hell, even badass about the way it stood and towered over us as we passed. Not too long ago, my friend moved into my parents' house because he needed a place to stay for the time being. We both have our boring moments and try to think of anything to do to cure them. Between then and now, I completely forgot about the house, but something made me bring it up. So on one cold night, we walk about a mile to the house, about a 15-minute walk. Beforehand, we have done research, and no one has owned the house in over 20 years. My friend was asking me if we could just drive my car there, but for some reason I had a bad feeling about that, even though if something were to happen, we would have gotten out of there a lot faster. We eventually got to the house, and we found all the doors to be locked. After some exploring and looking around, we found the trapdoors to the basement, and instead of metal, they were soft wood, weathered from years of rain. So soft that the wood just bent back and opened without the hinges budging. Once we got inside, it was really nothing but old stoves, countertops, torn wallpaper, and holes in the hardwood floor. Not even a few minutes into exploring, the sound of cowboy boots echoed beside the house on the porch. 
you boys better get out of my home. We rushed out of the house like raccoons scurrying away, looking behind us on the porch. No one. No one has lived there, and no one has owned the place. There was even a for sale sign in front of it years ago. Was this a spirit, or was someone messing with us? Whatever it was must have clipped out of the earth as we walked out because it was just gone. It was summer in Canada, and I, along with two of my friends, had planned to spend a few days camping. We actually found a small cabin that was available on these small cabin grounds for a cheap price. It was a large piece of forested land by a lake with a bunch of cabins scattered around, and you could rent them for however long, we booked the place at the last minute and decided to go there instead of camping. If you have ever been to northern Canada, then you know how barren the place is, with a man-made structure every couple of kilometers and forest all around us. Three hours later, when we arrived, it was maybe around 4 p.m. we met with the owner, who lived in a larger cabin nearby. After talking and paying for our stay, we went off to our cabin. The cabin was small, with a stream leading up to a larger lake right beside the cabin. And a small fire pit out front. There was dense forest pretty much all around us, and being that far out, we had little to no service. We took advantage of the daylight, took out some kayaks that came with the cabin, and explored our surroundings. As it got dark, we set up a small campfire in front of the cabin in the fire pit and just talked. A massive thunderstorm snuck up on us, and it soon started to rain. Since it was raining, we didn't bother to put the fire out since it was already basically going out by itself. We went inside and got ready for bed. The beds were all in the same room, so we just talked for the most part since we couldn't fall asleep, with thunder in the distance and rain pattering on the window of the cabin. My two friends decided to go outside to have a cigarette, and since I didn't smoke, I just tagged along for fun. I was behind them, and as they opened the door, they said, hey, the fire is still lit. I thought to myself, how could it still be lit? It was raining, and the fire was basically going out by itself. I looked over their shoulders and saw the fire still burst away, as if it were just lit and burning at full strength. Just after that, they kind of froze and whispered, what's that? Before yelling and running back into the room and slamming the front door shut. I couldn't get a visual of what they said because I was all the way behind them, and it happened way too fast, so I assumed they were joking around, but the expression on their faces just showed pure fear, so I took it seriously, and we all went into our bedroom and locked the door behind us. They were clearly frightened and completely out of breath. I asked them what they saw, and they explained that they saw a wispy white figure that went into a pine tree, which was about 15 feet from the fireplace. The figure apparently moved very quickly and then popped its head out to the side of the tree before hiding again. They described it as almost like smoke, but it moved like it was a person. I peeked out the window to see if it was still there, and I didn't see anything except for that fire still burning. We basically stayed up all night and never saw my friends that afraid, especially with one of them being in the military. He just held his knife next to his chest while laying in bed and staring at the ceiling, not saying a word the whole night. In the morning, we tried finding an explanation for it, but we couldn't come up with anything. We spoke to the owner about it, and he told us he would be on the lookout. I wish I could have seen it for myself, but they swear by what they saw, and it was definitely nothing they had ever seen before. We still couldn't find an explanation for what happened that night. So this one night I was out with my friends, and I can't get this out of my head. I believed in the paranormal, and only seeing a glimpse of this makes me horrified by what's out there, it's the stuff that keeps me awake at night. I try not to mention this because I want to believe it's fake, but I know it's not. I feel like I'm going crazy when I think about it. So it's a simple story. We decided to play hide and seek, it was a weird idea since we were 13 to 14. I was hiding with three friends out back by a shed, and there is a lot of wood surrounding the house. We were yelling because it was fun to see if we would get caught. Then we heard heavy footsteps run by into the woods. I only got a slight glimpse, it ran at human speed, but it was tall, thin, and all white from what I saw. We thought this was one of our friends, but we called him, saying you can't hide in the woods, but he wasn't and said he never left the house. Once we were caught, I went to the garage, and they were there and never left. The people with me heard something but didn't see it. Do you know what this was or have images? I am going crazy knowing we live with these things nobody knows about besides this community. I need help figuring out what this is. When I was a kid, we'd drive 12 hours to visit my grandma two times a year. She lived in an old house in the middle of nowhere in South Carolina. The only other building near her was an old mechanic shop down the road. My mom has always been weirdly into spiritual stuff and paranormal investigations. She'd always take pictures in the dark to try to catch a ghost picture, and I remember every time we'd get the camera film processed, there'd be tons and tons of random dark photos of our house, yard, graveyard, 
the woods, etc. She'd point at the dust particles the flash caught and tell me they were orbs. My dad would laugh and tell me it was just dust. Well, at my grandma's house one visit, I was looking for a toy of mine or something. I don't remember why, but I went into my grandma's bedroom. The lights were off, and it was night, so it was really dark. I find this weird because I was scared of the dark, and it was out of character to willingly go into a dark room alone. I remember seeing two dancing lights on the front of the dresser or wardrobe. I almost shat myself and ran out into the kitchen, where my mom was, and told her. She, being herself, booked it for the camera and ran into the room. There was nothing in the wardrobe anymore. I figured it was probably nothing, maybe a reflection or something? She snapped a picture and then took some more pictures around the room. The film was processed when we got home, and all of the photos were normal except for one of the wardrobes, where there were two bright lights. I remember they looked nothing like the dust particles in the other photos my mom took. I'd always show my friends the picture and tell them the story years later. Unfortunately, my mother was also a hoarder, and the photo was eventually lost in the mess and likely thrown away when we moved. I kicked myself for not keeping it in a safer space, but I was just a kid, so I guess being careless is what is to be expected. But I think that what happened is really cool nonetheless, even if people don't believe me when I tell them about it. It was like 11 pm when my friends and I decided to be brave and go to the woods at night. It's a really crazy thing to do, but yeah. So, we took our bicycles and went there. Of course, we brought some lanterns with us, and we had our phones with us, so yeah. Alright, everything is good, right? Well, after 5 minutes of walking there, we started to hear footsteps. We started to panic a little bit, thinking about who was in the woods with us. We continued walking, with our bicycles close to us, in case we needed to run fast, because everything can happen in the woods at night, right? After like 2 minutes, we started to hear someone cutting down a tree. How funny that we were there alone at night with someone we probably didn't know who had an axe. Yes, we were really lucky, huh? The moment we started realizing that it wasn't a good idea to go there at night was when we saw BLOOD. Yes, it could be the blood of an animal or something, but why risk it? Then, we started to hear someone laughing really loud. That was it. We were up on our bicycles, and we were gone. I remember that we cycled so fast that the next day we all had pain in our leg muscles. The experience was really cool, like the adrenaline we were feeling, but we don't know if we would do it again. This is more of a weird time than an actual paranormal experience I have had involving ghosts or some shit. When I was younger, there was this creepy wood in my area, I still live around it, and I remember one day when I was waiting for the school bus, another student at my bus stop had walked over to the bus stop and stared ahead in the forest. I asked them what was wrong, and they began to speak about something in the woods. They never specified it being a crackhead, but of course, with me thinking back, it seemed to make me think, oh, maybe he was just ducking with me. I never went to the woods because I couldn't help but have a thought that there might be something. The woods are pretty big, so they stretch behind my house. I go outside to watch my dog since one accidentally got out one time, but we were lucky to find him again. It was night time, and I was just letting the dogs out for the night. I never really took into consideration how creepy the woods made me feel at night when I was younger. It always felt like there was something watching me, but it could always have been an overactive imagination. Same with the kid at the bus stop, but the kid seemed spooked and said they saw something. The talk of the woods did come up a few months ago this following school year, I am a 10th grader now, technically 11th as my school year ended. They talked about how creepy the woods were and how they were probably haunted. I know this is most likely a case of overactive imagination, but I can't get it out of my head that the woods were mentioned several times during my school life. I had an encounter I have never been able to explain. When I was 10, I was wandering through my backwoods on St. Patrick's Day. By that point, I was well aware that leprechauns were not real, so I wasn't looking for anything so much as just killing some time. There are no neighbors behind our house. Just woods. I knew the woods very well and was extremely comfortable spending days wandering around. At one point, I stopped walking for a bit and was just looking around when I heard some sticks break. I looked over, fully thinking I was about to see a deer, when all of a sudden out walked a 7 foot tall leprechaun with orange hair. No mask on or anything like that, just a huge dude dressed as a leprechaun in the middle of the ducking woods with orange hair and a beard. He didn't see me, and I totally froze up. I watched him walk for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. The only thing I can remember thinking is, I can't do anything. I was frozen but somehow managed to yell out, hey you. Dude stopped in his tracks, turned his head, looked at me, and sort of grinned. I lost all courage at that point and turned around and ran faster than I ever have in my life. 
I have no clue if he gave chase or not, but in my mind, it felt like he was right behind me, and I never slowed or looked back. This experience has driven me nuts ever since it happened because I just don't know how to explain it. Nobody knew where I was going, so it couldn't have been set up. I've asked my parents, and they both say they didn't have anything to do with it and thought I just made it up as a kid. Thinking about it as an adult, my best guess is that I saw something that day, and my brain just wasn't able to process it. My mind turned it into something that I could understand, and since it was St. Patty's Day, I ended up seeing a leprechaun. I honestly have no idea, though, and it has stuck with me for years. I've never seen anything paranormal, or whatever you want to call it, since. Also, I've always hated the fact that in a world where people see ghosts, UFOs, and Bigfoot, I had to see the most ridiculous thing possible. I figured I would throw it out and see if anyone had any explanations or similar experiences. This happened in the mountains in the northeastern US. My dad doesn't really open up about spirits or the paranormal. Or doesn't like to anyway. We often talk about hunting stories, and one night I asked him if anything weird happened to him. What he said I've heard of before, but I'm not sure what it is. He went hunting with my papa. At some point, they were walking in, and my papa and my father split up to hunt different areas. He said it was quieter after the split. He got to his hunting spot, kicked out a spot, and sat down to see a series of ridges and benches. It was a cold morning, and he had to put his heavy outer jacket on right after getting to his spot, which is not usual for him. He was feeling cold and tired from the walk, so he dozed off. He woke up to what he thought was a Native American chant with pounding drums. The sound started to get louder and louder on one of the benches. Still not in sight of him. He said it was almost as if the sound went past him without him seeing it. After the sound disappeared, a few deer ran down from behind him, and he managed to harvest one. Did the deer see the Native Americans running up through the woods? But if the Native Americans ran up the mountain past my father, wouldn't that mean the deer would run away? In 1999, my family moved to northeastern Oklahoma and built their house here. They own a lot of land, and no one has moved in on it. I'm talking miles of wilderness. When I was younger, I would explore the wilderness and wouldn't think twice about things I heard or saw and just assume they were animals. When I was about 12 or 13, my mother moved out to California and took me with her, and at 17, I joined the military and served a few years to come back and go to college for a bit, so I've been gone quite a while, to say the least. I feel this is important to state as a lot has changed since I left, including more family moving in since I left. Last month, I moved back to Oklahoma to be close to loved ones and find some work. Upon arriving, I was greeted by one of my uncles, who had moved in while I was gone, and I noticed he was watching Ghost Adventures on the TV, which happens to be a favorite of mine. We began to talk about the paranormal, and he began to tell me some of the things he's been experiencing. He described that there's been bright light pillars to the north, what would be an old wheat field on the property, and random light patterns to the west, abandoned property, no one has owned it for many years, it's just an old barn and equipment. At first, I just thought there was some satellite work or something along those lines due to Oklahoma still expanding technology-wise. I asked my grandfather about this, and he described a night where lights began to come through his window, so bright that they illuminated the walls of the room. He got up and went outside to find a bright light on the hill above our house, mind you, it's all wilderness and trees, nothing human-related would be this close to the house without us knowing, helicopters, vehicles, etc. It's very quiet here due to how secluded it is. He said that there was absolutely no noise being made, just light. He also mentioned that there have been large, perfectly cut, and symmetrical holes appearing on the property with no explanation. I asked a few of my other family members, and they explained some of the history of the property, and apparently one of the native trails passes right through our land. I started to piece these together and thought that it may not be something like aliens but more something paranormal like spirits. Today is Christmas, and we were all in the dining room getting ready to eat when my grandfather lost consciousness and fell over. He explained that he felt dizzy. We shrug it off because he's getting old and he doesn't get around much anymore, so we assumed he stood up too quickly. About 30 minutes ago, I nearly fell over while talking to my grandmother. I felt the same feeling. My uncle, whom I mentioned earlier, saw this and explained how a few months ago he found himself outside, staring at the stars, when all of a sudden he blacked out and fell over, waking up on the ground covered in blood. He sat me down and explained that things have been happening since he got here. Earlier, I explained that when I was younger, I shrugged things off. I remember being in the woods looking for turtles and frogs, it had just rained, and I would always do this. I had gone a lot deeper into the woods than I normally did. Deeper into the wilderness, I found walls built from stone, covered in moss, this makes sense now that I know more about the property. 
At this moment, I remember a feeling of pure anxiety and fear. I remember running all the way home through the trees and brush. What do you guys think is going on? I was always very adventurous and spent a lot of my free time with my best friend running around my neighborhood, playing in the woods, searching for creatures, frogs, snakes, rare bugs, etc. I also did a lot of fishing at this pond by my house, maybe 0.5 to 1 mile from my house. Also, to note, I lived in a very wooded area. My house was situated in a clearing, and while there were neighbors around, there was thick wood towards the back of my house that went on for miles. Now, on to the story. This one day in particular, my friend wasn't able to come over, but I didn't want to waste the beautiful day, so I decided to go into the woods to the pond to do some fishing. It was a bright, sunny day, and I was ready to go catch some bass. My parents gave me a lot of freedom and didn't really care where I was, as long as I was back before dinner. I never wore a watch, so I just used the position of the sun to determine the time. I get to the pond, and everything is great. I caught a bunch of fish to bring home. Throughout my day, I periodically looked up in the sky to gauge when I'd need to head back. I looked up at a particular time and remembered being happy that I still had a few hours left before dinner. I decide to sit down on the side of the pond, fish while sitting, and relax a bit. This is when things got strange. I should mention that one of my neighbor's houses is situated right on this pond. Essentially, the back of their house faces the pond and is about 200 feet away from the edge. They always let me use the pond whenever I wanted and always came outside to say hi and to make sure I'm okay. Well, I found it odd that, after being there for so long, they didn't come out. Maybe they weren't home? Anyway, I began to realize that I was out in the woods all alone, with no one around. This didn't alarm me, but I was now aware of that fact. I dismissed it and kept fishing. About an hour later, I noticed that a breeze had started. These weren't strong gusts, but enough to ruffle the trees and suppress sound. I started to get the feeling that I was being watched, even though I knew I was alone. I wasn't scared at this point, but I was starting to get a bit weirded out. As these gusts came and went, I began to hear a faint voice that sounded like my mom's coming from the direction of my house. It sounded annoyed, and I was like, crap, I better get home. I was kind of relieved, since I was starting to get a bit freaked out. I quickly packed my gear and headed out. Since the voice sounded annoyed, I was still thinking that it was my mom, I decided to take a shortcut home rather than my usual route through the woods. This shortcut involved a dirt road with numerous houses on it, but this road directly connected to my street and brought me home in a more direct way. The breeze blew, and I started to rush towards the exit of the woods to the dirt road. I felt much safer once I could see other houses and no longer felt that I was being watched. I rushed home, and I could still hear the voice calling to me, getting louder as I drew closer to my house. Once I got there, I left my gear outside and walked in the door, expecting my parents to be mad at me for something. My mom was right in the kitchen and smiled and said, Wow, home early today? To which I responded, Aren't you calling me to come home? She looked puzzled for a second and said I was probably just hearing things. I remember being weirded out for a second, but I didn't really give it that much thought after. I went back outside, gutted the fish, and brought the flesh into the house to clean and grill. That was the end of that, or so I thought. Fast forward to about a week later. It was a warm summer night, so my windows were open. My mom went away on business, and it was just my dad, my brother, and me in the house. I'm fast asleep and am woken up suddenly by what sounded like my dad's voice calling to me from outside. I looked at my clock on my nightstand, and it had just passed midnight. I thought it was very strange that my dad was outside, but I was still half asleep. I'm calling dad? All the way down the stairs. I don't get a response, and in my delirious state, I put my shoes on and go outside, still calling out for my dad. I'm now outside and still calling for my dad, but I don't hear anything, so I begin wandering around my yard, calling for him. Finally, I hear him calling my name from the woods. Without thinking about it, I start walking towards the woods, calling out for my dad. I'm about 50 feet from the tree line. I hear a voice booming back from my house, Op, what are you doing? I look back to see a flashlight and my dad walking towards me. He had heard me calling his name in the yard. His windows were open as well, and he must have heard me. I ran over to my dad, and he was like, what is wrong with you? Why were you walking towards the woods? To which I replied, I heard you calling me. Oh, I get it now. You were probably just sleepwalking, it happened. Now go back inside and get to bed. I went back to bed, and that was that. My dad gave me a little bit of a hard time when I woke up the next morning, something along the lines of some night you had last night, ha, huh? and that was the last we ever spoke about it. I grew up in a rural part of Ohio. 
my house had fairly dense woods located directly behind it. As a child, I had a passion for exploring. I especially loved exploring those woods. It was my favorite place to be. Prior to the incident, I had wandered through those woods many times, always with my mother's permission. There was one tree in particular that I frequently enjoyed climbing, usually about to the halfway mark, so I could perch myself on one of the heavier branches and just relax as I listened to the peaceful sounds of nature. Climbing that tree for the very first time was quite an accomplishment. From that position, I could partially see the back of my house. On that day, after a fair amount of exploring, I carefully scaled my favorite tree. I seated myself on a sturdy branch and took in the view. Naturally, being late in October, the sun inevitably began to set within a few minutes. I always felt a little saddened to see the darkness approaching. The woods were like my own little sanctuary. I could entertain myself out there for hours. When darkness began to fall, however, my mother would stand at the edge of the woods and call my name until I obediently returned home so as not to be stranded out there after dark. After watching the sun set until I could no longer see it, I began my descent down the tree. I was nearly at the bottom when I heard my mother's familiar voice calling my name. I thought nothing of it at first, as this routine had occurred plenty of times before. Then I realized something strange as my feet touched the ground. My mother's voice was coming from behind me, deeper in the woods, rather than towards the entrance, where she always stood when she called me home. My mom had never entered those woods before. At least not with me. I was eager to find her and show her all of my favorite spots before it grew too dark. That's when I realized something was off. How could she have gone into the woods ahead of me? Certainly I could have missed her, but as I said, she never entered those woods. She continued calling my name, but there was something strange about it. She sounded absolutely frantic, almost angry. Fearing that I was in trouble for reasons currently unknown, I froze in place. As her voice drew closer, I squinted my eyes to see if I could locate her and determine exactly how angry or upset she appeared to be. However, I didn't see anyone or anything unusual. Suddenly, I heard her voice calling my name from the direction of my house, sounding much calmer. Seconds later, from somewhere within the woods yet again. It wasn't an echo. I wasn't imagining things. I was literally hearing her beckoning me from the edge of our backyard, as well as ahead of me. My legs suddenly turned to jelly. I couldn't quite comprehend what was going on. Come here, right now. The voice that I originally believed to be her screamed from just ahead. I realized that whoever or whatever was mimicking my mother was drawing closer. I didn't question which voice was actually my mother's, as there was something about the way it sounded that unnerved me. Terrified of what I would see if I stood there much longer, I turned around and ran towards the exit of the woods as quickly as my legs could possibly carry me. It was amazing that I didn't trip over anything in my haste. Even though my house wasn't very far away from where I had been standing, those woods had never seemed larger to me than they did in that moment. From behind me, my mother's voice continued to call my name, now sounding desperate. Panic set in as my actual mother finally came into view, waiting patiently as she usually did until I returned home. In my frightened state, I absolutely refused to look back. As soon as I was out of the woods and in the backyard next to my mother, the other voice was suddenly gone. Rather than fading away, it seemed to stop the very moment I stepped foot into my backyard. I must have looked as frightened as I felt because my mother asked me what was wrong. Slowly but surely, my panic subsided. I didn't say anything until we were safely inside the house with our doors locked. I asked my mother if she had entered the woods. Appearing confused by the question, she told me that, of course, she hadn't. With that confirmation, I hesitantly asked her if she had heard anyone else calling my name and yelling. The answer to that question was also no. Although I was still very shaken up, I managed to explain everything that happened as clearly and rationally as possible. My mother was surprisingly nonchalant about the whole situation, explaining that I must have imagined it. I was spending too much time out there by myself. The incident in those woods has stayed with me to this day. I can still hear that voice as clear as a bell. Whoever or whatever it was calling my name sounded exactly like my mother, but I know it wasn't her. Not only was she waiting for me outside, but the voice also sounded strange in a way that I still can't fully explain. I didn't go back into the woods until I was 17 years old, and even then, I never hung out for very long. I've carefully gone over every possible explanation, but none of them seem entirely plausible. It certainly wasn't my mother playing a prank. There was no way she could have pulled it off. Not to mention the fact that she's never been one to play pranks. I also highly doubt that it was anyone else because, as I stated before, we lived in a rural area. The closet neighbor was at least a mile away, and I wasn't personally acquainted with any of them. How could they have known my name and where to find me? This experience took place a few months ago, 
in mid-November, in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. My girlfriend-to-be, another couple she was friends with at the time, and I were all hanging out. Being teenagers who enjoy trying our luck, all four of us decided to take a trip to Riverside Cemetery on the north side of town. Now, I've been to this cemetery searching for stuff myself before, and I had never had much more than the occasional, expected sign of spirits being nearby, such as white spots or orbs in photographs, or the occasional time where my camera would suddenly say low battery, powering down, even though I always make sure I change the batteries before stuff like this, or reduced shutter speed. So naturally, I thought that nothing more would likely happen this time. However, such was definitely not the case. I could tell the second we arrived at the cemetery that something was different. There was something about the way the air felt, the atmosphere was entirely different than usual. It was so much more energetic than normal. Anyway, the four of us got out of the car because the other three wanted to look around a little bit. I wasn't too keen on this idea at first, but I decided I didn't want to look weak in front of the girl I liked. So we got out, and I brought something I use for communication called dowsing rods with me. They're pretty cool, they are held horizontally, and spirits can move them based on questions you ask. If you don't have a pair, I suggest getting one, they're a must-have for any paranormal enthusiast. Well, we get out of the car, and we begin to use the dowsing rods I brought. I start asking some questions, and then the girl I liked, let's call her Kay, asks to use them, so I hand them over to her. She asks a few questions before the guy in the couple she invited, let's call him H, asks to use them. I say that's fine. He asks a couple more questions, and like the past two of us, the questions are answered, but nothing too extreme happens. At this point in time, the girl in the couple invited, E, is the only person who hasn't used the rods and didn't want to, but the rest of us pressured her into it. When she asked her question, though, the rods quickly whipped around to the answer rather than slowly, like for the three of us. So I take the rods back and ask if the spirit liked her, to which the answer is yes. Then, because I'm beginning to get suspicious, I ask if it's a benevolent spirit, and it answers no. I freak out, quickly close the session, and put the rods away. E is beginning to really freak out too, and so I have to comfort her. Meanwhile, K and H wander off into the headstones because they want to do some headstone rubbings. I'm starting to really feel the hairs on my neck prick up, and it's really making me anxious, which is when I begin to see things. Out of the corner of my eyes, I see black figures flitting in between the headstones, and this is making me really nervous. Mind you, K and H were on the other side of the cemetery at this time, and I had a clear line of vision of them. So it couldn't have been them. I tell E, and she and I quickly run to catch up with the others, having decided that splitting up is no longer a good idea. This is where things get really freaky. After a few moments of being out in the headstones, I hear something. It's so difficult to describe, yet it fills me with fear every time I have to describe it. It was a loud scream in the distance. And it could have been a person's scream, despite the fact that it was so animalistic, full of fury and rage, and sounded so inhuman from the rasp, the tenor of the scream, and the pure fury that sounded like a soul being dragged directly to hell. Not to mention, it came from the woods adjacent to the cemetery. I give the others a look, who look back at me with the same expression of pure terror on their faces, and we sprint straight to the car. We begin to take E to her house, and we turn on the GPS and follow the directions. However, it isn't long before E pipes up from the back seat, saying, this isn't how you get to my house. So K begins looking down at the step-by-step -step directions, and she is scrolling down, and the list keeps going. K scrolls for at least 30 seconds, and the directions keep coming. Mind you, E's house is three quarters of a mile at most from the cemetery, so there's no way the directions are accurate. We follow the directions for a few minutes before we realize they're leading us further and further from E's house and from town in general. We decide this may not be the best idea and just have E tell us how to get to her house. We get there, drop her off, and then try to use the GPS to get to my house, and the same thing happens. The GPS gives us endless weird directions, so we turn it off. That scream still haunts me. I wish I could impress upon all of you how tortured, how demonic, and how utterly inhuman that scream was. Furthermore, E would later tell us that that night, after we dropped her off at her house, one of her favorite plants was thrown off of her dresser and smashed on the floor. So my sister had a birthday yesterday, and I was spending some time with her at her house. We were talking about our childhood memories together, and I brought up the subject of our earliest memories that we could recall. I told her my earliest memory, and she explained that hers happened to be a dream, and in that dream she said she saw a very creepy man. She said she can still see the face of the man very vividly, which I find astounding because she was three years old when she had this dream. She turned 31 yesterday. Now I don't know about you, 
but I have a hard time remembering the faces of people I met recently, let alone being able to recall the face of someone I had never met before in one of my dreams when I was just three years old. She showed me a picture of what this man that she saw looked like, and the picture was that of Nasferatu, the spelling could be wrong. If you're not familiar with that name, look him up, I believe he is also called Orlik. Anyway, he's a vampire. A very creepy looking vampire with claws. I bring this all up because I have always had a strange feeling about myself and wonder if I might be connected to something that isn't really explainable. I was at an event when I was younger and saw this orb colored, neon white or blue, which is how I would explain it, but it wasn't shaped like an orb, more like the dog off of a nightmare before Christmas. I could tell no one in the room noticed it, but I didn't really feel like it was out of place. I grew up on a cul-de-sac right beside the woods. On the edge of the cul-de-sac, written in red, were the words beware of dugs. I always wondered what that meant. It may not be anything of significance, but it always gave me the creeps. While standing at the edge of those woods, I could always hear a creaking noise coming and going. I always imagined it being a screen door just opening and closing, but as I got older, I thought it may have been the sound of a noose. I'm still not sure what it was, but that definitely gave me the creeps. The next story is several years later, when I was about 17 years old and on my way to pick up my sister from work. She was getting off at midnight. I was about to turn on this certain road leading to her work, and by that road was a cemetery, and on the edge of the cemetery was a sidewalk, and on that sidewalk was this woman in a white gown walking barefoot. I remember she had brown hair that went down to the middle of her back, and just as I was about to turn on the road, she started to turn and look at me, and I got spooked and didn't look back. Several months later on New Year's Eve, at around midnight, me and my friends were driving on the town square, and my friend asked if we had seen that girl walking, and I asked what she looked like, and he explained the exact same thing that I had seen, except when I saw her, she wasn't carrying anything, especially a present. After that, we went looking for her and were at a spot that some guy had hung himself at. Then it started snowing. So if you guys could give me some insight into what this could all be, I would love to hear your thoughts. When I was about six years old, my parents and I moved into their newly built house in the middle of nowhere in North Louisiana. The community where we lived has no stores, no gas stations, no post office, no nothing, just a few houses, a Baptist church, and lots of pine forest. Most of the people who live there are from my mother's side of the family. When they grew up and got married, they just built a house near their family and never left the community. I know how strange this must seem to most people, but living in the South, this is sort of common. A brief history of the land. I'm not 100% sure if it was inhabited by Native Americans, but I know there are some sites about 20 to 30 minutes away. The three acres that my parents bought from my great-grandfather at one time were sold to an African-American community. This was after the Civil War, and they simply wanted to build a church where they could all worship. There was no cemetery, and the building had been torn down long before we got there. But the four big foundation rocks, I believe, are still there. My mom built her storage building on that same spot and designed it to look like a church. Our driveway makes two 90-degree turns, one to the right and then one to the left that goes up to the carport. On the first right turn, there used to be a house that belonged to one of my ancestors. The house is long gone, but every year the flowers that once surrounded the house bloom. It was kind of an eerie sight to see all these random flowers growing in the middle of what is now a forest. Now on to the thing story. I'm afraid it's not a very scary story, but it does make you think. One day, about a year or so after we moved in, I was sitting in the living room, and my mom was in her room. The house is two stories, and my room was upstairs, directly above my parents. You can't really see upstairs from downstairs unless you stand in a certain place at the front door. Anyway, one day I heard what sounded like someone stomping around upstairs. They go from my room to the office and back and forth. Just stomping loudly. My mom, thinking it was me, came out of her room and yelled up the stairs, Anna, what are you doing? I looked at her with a shocked look and said from the couch, Mama, I'm right here. She turned around to see me sitting on the couch and asked, wasn't that you stomping upstairs? I said, no, ma'am, I thought it was you. We just looked at each other in horror. The noise had stopped as soon as mom yelled up the stairs. We kept trying to figure out what it was. We had cats, but this noise wasn't cats, the house settling, or any other rational explanation. We told my dad about it when he got home. My dad is a Baptist preacher, so, of course, he doesn't believe in the supernatural. He just said we were crazy. Then, a few weeks later, he was home alone, and he heard it for himself. He told us about it when we got home, and he looked worried. After that, we never heard the footsteps clearly, just some bangs and strange noises. We took to calling it the thing. It mostly stayed in the upstairs hallway. 
Sometimes, while I was in my room, I would get the feeling that something was watching me. I'd turn around, expecting to see one of my parents or the cat, but nothing happened. My cats would randomly watch my bedroom door, then get up to follow something down the hall. We took in a stray black cat we called Bella. She was a crazy cat, nice and sweet, until she would randomly start biting the crap out of your hand. One day Bella and I were sitting on the love seat in the living room, and all of a sudden she sits up, looks at the corner of the big couch, bristles up, and starts growling at the couch. There was no one sitting on the couch. We never felt threatened by the thing. As long as it didn't hurt my family or pets, we welcomed it. My best friend is big on the paranormal and calls herself a psychic. One day, I brought her to the house. I didn't tell her anything at all, just to go through the house and tell me what she thought. We went all the way through the house. My mom came home, and we went downstairs to talk. After a while, I noticed she looked a little uneasy. She said, Hey Anna, you wanna go outside for a smoke? I said okay, and we went out to her car. Sorry, I just had to get out of there, she said this when we were safely in her car. What do you mean? I asked. She then told me that she felt two spirits in the house. One was of a woman who was nice, she stayed upstairs and just liked being in the house with us because she was lonely. The other was of a male, whom she described as not evil but not good either. That's why she wanted to get out of the house. We never had things fly across the room, lights flicker, or anything super scary, just the footsteps and some random bumping and the occasional watched feeling, oh, and the cats. I moved out of my parents' house a little over a year ago. A few months after I moved out, my mom turned my old room into an exercise room that they never use. One day I came over, and my mom and I were sitting in the living room talking when we heard a bump upstairs. We both looked up at the ceiling. Then my mom looked at me and said in a quiet voice, ever since you left, I have heard bumps like that late at night. I used to hear them all the time when you were here. I always assumed they were you playing upstairs. Now that I've moved out, she realized the sounds weren't me after all, and she gets goosebumps when she hears them now. This happened while I was doing my army service in Switzerland. I am not really allowed to talk about what we were doing, but I'll try to keep things clear. My company had installed a huge antenna, and it had to be guarded by two soldiers day and night. We were on top of a hill, far away from any city, and near a huge forest. It was 1800 hours, and I had just started my watch of 6 hours with another soldier. Everything went fine, we smoked cigarettes and kept ourselves occupied until our watch ended at midnight. Then, we received a call from our superior, and he told us that one of the soldiers that was supposed to take the watch couldn't come, and one of us had to stay for another 6 hours. We tossed a coin to see who would stay from midnight to 6 in the morning with temperatures of minus 20 Celsius. Of course I lost, and I had to wait for the other soldier to come and join me for the night watch. And they did not send the best because I knew he would sleep all night when I saw him climbing the hill with his sleeping bag. And that's what he did, he immediately took refuge in the tent and fell asleep. It was the coldest and longest night of my life, but there was nothing special about it. The weird part happened in the morning. We received another call from our superior, and he told us that we had an NBC exercise, which means that we have to wear our NBC suit, the anti-chemical suit, the one with the gas mask, and everything that goes with it. I was really upset and exhausted because I wasn't able to sleep with that thing on, and sleep was my only reward after that 12-hour watch. Well, I got out of the tent, and this is where I saw something. There was a woman standing next to our antenna. And she wasn't moving, she was just standing there, 5 meters from the tent. I couldn't see her face because the sun was starting to rise behind her. I knew she was a woman because she had really long hair and had curves. Remember that we were in the middle of nowhere and this lady was standing there, not moving like she was frozen? I started to freak out, and I called the other guy to show him what I was looking at. I don't know why, but he wasn't scared at all, and he told her to leave because she wasn't allowed there. But she didn't make a move, she just stood there looking at us, or at least in our direction. And this lasted for at least a minute or two. I was so confused about how a woman could ignore two soldiers telling her to leave a forbidden area. I mean, we are in Switzerland, the army is not that impressive, I know, but people usually don't do this kind of thing, they just move away, especially when it's 6 in the morning. And what was she doing in the middle of nowhere, obviously not dressed for this cold weather? How long was she standing there, and how did she end up here? I didn't hear any footsteps. So many questions went through my mind at that moment. The other soldier didn't think twice and started walking towards her. When he almost reached her, she started running very fast. She ran directly into the forest nearby. I saw her getting deep down in the forest, and she disappeared from our sight. I'm really a rational thinker. I question everything and think that there is always an explanation. For me, 
The explanation is that she was simply a jogger because of the way she ran to the forest, but. Almost three minutes have passed between the first time I saw her and the moment she started running away, three minutes of not moving at all, looking at me, dressed in something really tight with minus 20 degrees, and in the middle of nowhere. Thank God there was someone with me, because nobody would have believed me. If anyone knows what I encountered, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm not even sure if I want to know. First off, I have never really had anything paranormal happen to me in my relatively short life, 25 years. Being a scientist, it never really made much sense to believe in something that couldn't be proven. However, that all changed that one night. About four years ago, I was attending a college in southern Arkansas for my bachelor's in biology. My then girlfriend and I didn't have much money, so we shared an on-campus apartment so our scholarships would cover the rent. This complex was on the outskirts of campus, right next to a rather large pine forest that some people went to to smoke, but you could always hear them. In between the forest and our apartment was a dirt parking lot. Our apartment sat on the first floor of the complex, on the side closest to the tree line. We came back to the apartment after grocery shopping one night. After bringing all the groceries in, I decided to sit out on the patio, looking at the forest and the night sky. It was a nice, spring Arkansas night with not a cloud in the sky, so this didn't surprise my girlfriend. She went inside, and I sat down. As I'm listening to the whippoorwills, I notice a green light coming from just behind the tree line. It was blinking relatively slowly and looked as if it were around someone's neck, and that thing was digging. Not digging with a shovel, but more animalistic. Like a wild boar digging for grubs. It was making no sounds and seemed to be minding its own business. As I'm watching this thing very intently, a car pulls into the dirt parking lot, briefly flashing its headlights over the light. At this point, the light stood up, turned solid red, and darted in a straight line through the trees away from the car. Not like a deer running through the trees, mind you, but straight, without moving. I estimated that it probably moved about 40 to 45 miles per hour. Needless to say, I did not sleep that night. The next day, I got up early and went to investigate where the light was. There was a small opening next to a creek where I estimated the light was coming from. However, there were no signs of digging or tracks of any kind. I walked in the direction the light fled to. The clearing quickly went back to being a thick understory made up of lots of scrub oak, greenbrier, and limbs. I could barely walk through without getting cut up, and I certainly couldn't walk in a straight line. I do not know what I saw that night. I've certainly never heard of anything like this, and I've never seen that light again. I talked to some of my wildlife management friends to see if they had tagged some animals with an LED collar or tag, and they looked at me like I was crazy. Doing so would make no sense and would reduce the survival of the animal. So what was it? An ET? A lost spirit? A person? Or an animal? Me and my friends went into my backyard forest. We went at least five minutes deep into the forest, down to a stream. We looked across the stream and saw a log, or at least we thought it was a log. It might have been a log, but when one of us pointed it out, it seemed to have turned its head. We ran as fast as we could out of the forest. It was a sleepover. We went to sleep around 3 o'clock, but I ended up waking up around 4 o'clock after hearing a noise. I saw a shadowy figure that immediately disappeared once I saw it. I haven't seen any of it since. It could have just been my imagination, but I could have sworn that I saw it. And it had the same outline as what we saw from a distance earlier. My friends told me that I was just paranoid, but I don't think I was. So I checked it out again in the same place, and the log figure was gone. So I still feel as if that thing was not after me but after one of my friends. Two years later, and I still haven't heard or seen anything of it, although every now and then I get a feeling that I am being watched. I have been getting a little less sleep, but I think that might just be the fact that my sleep schedule is trying to adjust, but I still don't know what that thing is, whether or not it was real, or if it was all part of my mind playing tricks on me. But I don't think that was it. Remember when I said I hadn't seen anything of it since? I lied. The other day I went back in the forest, and there it was, in the same position that me and friends said it was two years ago. I brought them over there, and they confirmed that we were seeing the same thing that we saw two years ago. It did not look over this time. But I have had an uneasy feeling ever since I saw it. They started to stop one year later, but when I saw it a few days ago, the uneasy feeling increased. I don't know what it is or what it wants, but I don't like it. It is not anything I have seen in any paranormal YouTube videos or anything about the paranormal. Which leads me to believe it was not real. But my friends had confirmed it was real, and I am not questioning what they said. So it was real, and it was scary. I hope the uneasy feeling goes down soon, and if the thing ever comes near my house again, I'm going to call the police. And I forgot to mention that the morning after the sleepover, 
I saw not footprints but something else that I couldn't put my finger on. Something that no human foot could ever make. So I have no idea what it was and don't plan to try to figure it out. I never really believed in the paranormal or the supernatural. I always thought the stories about people being haunted or possessed were just stories made up for entertainment or cases of severely mentally ill patients being misunderstood by fanatical priests claiming demonic possession. I never suspected that they were actually real, but when I was 13, my naive brain would be put in its place. It was the summer of 2007. Life was good. I had a pretty normal teenage life. I had a few friends my age who lived in the same neighborhood as me, and we would do a lot of outdoor activities like hiking, mountain biking, and fishing. We lived just north of the Ozark Mountains in a nice little town in Arkansas. My father had worked very hard to give us all a good life. He came from a poor family and joined the military at age 18 to better his future, and it paid off. He got a good job working on airplanes, and we moved to the country. My parents got a steal on a really nice old house in the village. It was a nice little community built into the woods. We were a happy, normal middle-class family. That is, until that thing showed up and ruined our lives. There were a lot of local legends about the natives that used to inhabit the area. Supposedly, our entire community was built on top of sacred land. I used to walk the trails near my house a lot, and you could find cliffs and overhangs with Indian paintings on the walls and remnants of their civilization. I always felt bad about how they were driven from their homes by my ancestors, but I was still grateful for my home and my wonderful life. The kids at school would often scare each other by telling tales of shamans summoning skinwalkers and rakes, and to this day they still haunt the woods at night, looking for a midnight snack. I always laughed it off. Ghosts and monsters aren't real, they're just made-up stories to scare kids. I always thought the ghost hunter shows were ridiculous. You wouldn't hear or see anything on camera, but the people in the show would jump at a creek in the night, and suspenseful music would play while the camera focused on empty darkness. Those shows can be fun for the imagination, but the reality of paranormal entities is much more terrifying. They can tear apart families and bring your whole world crashing down. I would learn this dark reality one summer night. The air was cool. I had my window open, and I could hear the wind flowing through the leaves. The cicadas reverberating through the midnight woods put me in a sleepy trance. I relaxed and drifted off to sleep. In such a peaceful place, I was completely safe. I always felt one with the woods. It really is beautiful here. Cradled in the sounds of nature, I drifted deep into sleep. Then, a wave of panic. I feel every hair stand up. It chills down my spine. I feel the eyes of someone on me. I can feel their sinister intent. Every fiber in me is telling me to run. There is something here that wants to kill me. No, worse. It wants to own me and see me suffer. It has been watching me. For a long time. I have been chosen. I can't breathe. Help me. Help me. I scream. Mom. I hear laughter. Not human, not a physical voice. Multiple voices of all octaves laughing at once. I can't open my eyes, I can't breathe or talk, but I see its eyes. Blue bloodshot bulging eyes. Huge pupils. Red is filling my mind. I feel pressure. My entire body is vibrating, and I feel like I'm going to explode. I gasp as I fully awaken. But as I open my eyes, I freeze. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Through my open door, I can see something laying on our living room couch. It's clearly visible, but clearly not a person. It's like a shadow. But flowing. The moonlight illuminates its face. A skull with a sinister smile. It has those same eyes from my dream. Huge bulging, wide open eyes. Crystal blue pupils. It's staring at me, smiling. It's awkwardly sprawled out on the couch, and its shadowy body, like a translucent but pitch black cloak, flows as if underwater. I'm getting chills just typing this, and I want to be clear that this is not a fictional story. This really happened. I was so scared, I was frozen. I felt electricity going up and down my spine and through my brain. My eyes were wide and watering. My mouth hung open. It stared into my eyes. Into my mind for what felt like hours. It then quickly shifted out of sight. It darted down the couch and into the shadows. Adrenaline hit me, and I ran into my parents' room. I burst open the door, panting, and covered myself in sweat. My parents were at first annoyed, and it was the typical thing parents do when something like this happens. But as I described every detail about my encounter, and when they saw how terrified I was, I started to see a look of unease and fear in my father's eyes. He was scared. He believed me. My father, being a devout Christian, believed in demons, and he was convinced I had just been tormented and that I was in danger. 
He was very serious, and I could see that he was disturbed by what had just happened. He woke up my little sister, and the whole family gathered in the living room. I wish my dad had never done what he did next. He got out his Bible and turned the pages to a verse. I don't quite remember the actual verse, but it was something about casting out demons. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave my family alone, he yelled angrily, cursing the demon. If you want one of us, take me. Leave my family alone. We sat in the living room talking well into the night, and after a while, we were all tired and went back to bed. I couldn't sleep, though. I couldn't forget those eyes and their evil smile. The way it moved. It was disturbing. Fast forward a few months, and things were normal. Me and my sister went back to school, and for the most part, I had forgotten all about the demon. I even convinced myself it was a bad dream, or even sleep paralysis, even though that was the only time sleep paralysis had ever happened to me. I went on with my life. Until we got the worst news I had ever heard to this day. My dad was diagnosed with a rare form of bone cancer, and it had spread. He was dying. We were devastated. I hugged my father and cried all day that day. I couldn't believe I was going to lose my dad. He was always so strong and seemed very healthy. The weird thing is, and the doctors were also puzzled, his cancer was usually only found in teenagers. It was a cancer that, almost 100% of the time, was only found in boys in their early teens. This shocked me and made me feel guilty. The whole experience of the demon became prominent in my mind, and I remembered my father's words to the demon. I think it had its eye on me but went after my dad instead. I wish it had taken me, though. My family would be much better off today if it had. My father remained positive through his sickness. He went to chemotherapy sessions, started eating healthier, and worked out as much as he could. With his bald head and amputated leg, people would often come up to him and thank him for his service. He always laughed and said, thank you because he was a veteran, however, contrary to what people thought, his condition was much worse than if he had stepped on an eyed. He lived for three more years, even though the doctors said he had less than a year to live. He always stayed happy and positive, more for our sake than his own. But toward the end, he started to slowly deteriorate. It was awful. I couldn't do anything to help him. The man I looked up to, who protected us and whom I always saw as invincible, was crumbling before me. He lost all his weight and started sleeping on the couch to not disturb my mom. He was so sick. He suffered so much. I would hear his death rattles and moans and want nothing more than to help him in any way I could. Something that disturbs me so much to this day is that I started to realize something. He more and more resembled the demon. He was getting so thin that he looked like a skeleton, and he had very blue eyes. Sometimes he would just look at me from the couch, and I would get chills. The demon had been mocking me. I imitated what he would do to my father while viciously smiling. As if it were funny. This enrages me. How can something be so vile? So purely evil? My poor father soon died and left us a broken family. My mother fell into a deep depression. I looked after my little sister and tried to be the best father figure I could be, even though I was a poor substitute. We fell behind on the bills, and the bank foreclosed our house. We lost everything. The next handful of years were a struggle, but now I'm an adult and have had some sort of stable life. I recently figured out why my father was so shaken that night and didn't just blow it off as a bad dream. I visited my sister recently, and we started talking about ghosts and the paranormal. I asked if she had ever seen anything like that, and she hesitated for a second but then told me. And what she said gave me the chills. She was very young the night I saw the demon, and she had largely forgotten that night. But she told me she used to see a shadowy man standing at the end of her bed. He had a skull for a face. Demons are real. This is an actual experience I had, and it still freaks me out to this day. So when I was a teenager, I had this friend. He would be in mid-conversation with me and randomly trail off on some weird shit that sounded creepy and didn't make any sense, then come to me and not have any clue what he said and be like, whatever man, I don't know what you're talking about, and continue on with a normal conversation like nothing happened. Usually, it ends at that. But when we were 15-ish, he went into one of his things, kind of like a trance or whatever, while we were on the phone. He said something like, follow the tracks to your right, then on your right again near the end, you'll come to their resting place. I'll explain the layout of where I was living because it is important for the next parts. I lived in a pretty nice trailer park, ooh, spooky, I know, off a main road in a small town, heavily wooded and nowhere near town. The main driveway came down the middle of the trailer park and dead ended at the rear. A little past that dead end was an embankment, and at the bottom was a railroad track that was very rarely used. To the right, it dead ended in some woods, 
with one side being at the back of an abandoned old mill and the other side having a pretty dense set of woods behind a neighborhood. So I follow his weird, cryptic directions after getting off the phone. It was late afternoon in the summer. I head to the railroad tracks and head right towards the end. At some point before the end, I hear footsteps in the woods on my right. Being curious, I head up the embankment and towards the noise. There was nobody there. But I did see a small graveyard curiously tucked away in these woods behind a neighborhood. Likely a small family plot. Ranging from the early 1700s to the very early 1900s. Only about 20 markers. I was intrigued and, of course, brought that friend later, and he was weirded out, insisting he had no idea it was there. But he wasn't the lying type, so I believed him. It became a hangout spot of mine as I was dumb and brave, and I would go there at night at all hours, acting fearless. Nothing really weird ever happened there, so move on. Another day, another conversation, and Buddy randomly breaks into another trance. He says, head to the tracks, cross them, and when you enter the woods, you will see him. My cocky self immediately does just that. Late afternoon once again. This time I head to the tracks behind the trailer park, but I cross them. Which goes through a bit of wood, comes into a clearing with an old mill, a different one because it's an old mill town, on the left, and on the right are miles of cutout power lines cutting through the woods, supplying all the random neighborhoods scattered throughout the area. Straight ahead, across the street from the mill, is a more densely wooded area. So following those directions again, I head towards the tree line. The moment I set foot into the tree line, I heard branches snapping and immediately saw just the black shadow or silhouette of a guy in all black on a black horse galloping through the woods away from me and towards the left, disappearing into the trees. I was a bit shocked, as it was not common to see horses around my town at all. But being cocky and brave, I decided to head to where he came from, which was to the right on the edge of the tree line, following the cutout of the power lines. Near the edge of the tree line, I found an old, collapsed horse stable. Literally, nothing else is near it. There was another neighborhood about a mile in the direction of where he disappeared. But there was nothing else around the stable. So, being intrigued and a little freaked out, I go call my buddy and tell him. The following day, I brought him with me to show my findings because he just refused to believe me, and I was getting suspicious of him playing stupid, possibly. But the most unbelievable part was that as we entered the tree line where I saw the horseman the day before, we both saw him taking the same path as I had previously. Broad daylight. As clear as possible. There was no way we both imagined it. Both of us were a little freaked out. But we continued, and I showed him the stable also. The strangest part of all was that I brought a couple other friends to see the stable, and each time, he appeared to us. So after finding the stable and hanging around the graveyard, things started to ramp up, with the little encounter becoming much more intense. TVs and stereos turn on by themselves. Multiple times. Even in the presence of company or family. Intense feelings of being watched, and just inexplicable moments of dread and terror for no reason. I heard people having loud conversations or music like a radio being turned on in the other room while home alone, and literally nobody was in sight outside my home. Stuff was flying across the room violently. Fresh handprints and the steam on my bathroom mirror after a shower. I'd hear the distinct sound of my mom coming home, throwing the door open and tossing her keys on the table, and the cabinet and fridge slamming open and closed while she made herself a drink, she was not a quiet or subtle woman. I just walked out of my room to talk to her and realized nobody was there. Yet still, one night around 2 to 3 a.m., I got bored and decided to head down to the graveyard. I was feeling watched and just super uneasy, and I was trying to be stubborn and refused to feel scared for whatever the hell reason. I was rebelling, I guess. Telling myself I couldn't be harmed. So I get to the graveyard, and all is normal and quiet. I hang out for a while, realize I'm being dumb, and decide to head home and get some sleep. I head back down the tracks towards home. I get to where I need to head up the embankment to enter the driveway for the trailer park. I'm about halfway up the bank when I hear something rustle. I look up and see the horseman on his horse looking down at me. Pitch black. It's almost like a shadow in the dark, but you can still see the outlines of everything. Yet nothing reflected light. I hadn't heard of it at this time, but it was like how some describe the shadow people. I remember staring at him for a few seconds in disbelief and shock. Then the horse made that little PPFFTTT noise with his lips, and I snapped out of it. I turned down the bank and ran along the tracks as I heard hoofbeats following me. I turn up a shallower part into the woods next to the trailer park, weaving through the trees, trying to slow him down until I reach the street and run to the trailer I lived in, which was at the front. I jump through the door, damn near busting through the screen door, as I hear the hoofs thudding behind me. My mom was at work, so I was turning on every light, TV, 
and radio in the place to try and make it too loud or bright to keep whatever was at bay, as if that would help. I sat on the couch waiting for my mom to get home, and I eventually fell asleep. I woke up as she finally came home as daylight was coming in. I told her everything, and she told me I shouldn't be messing with this stuff. She believed me because she had always had experiences, and she told me about them regularly. Once the sun was finally up, I went to the embankment, where I saw him. I was wondering if I had somehow imagined it all. Even curious if there was just a horse out in the area for whatever reason, however unlikely, but just trying to find an explanation. I found hoof prints in the sand at the top of the embankment and only in that spot. That was when I decided it was getting too much for me, and while not being religious normally, I started praying to make it all stop and swearing I would stop messing with it. It all kind of died down until around when I turned 18, and suddenly it all just stopped. And I haven't had a single experience since. I've been having paranormal encounters for most of my life. Be it actually seeing ghosts, feeling their presences, or literally hearing them in my head, I know it sounds crazy, but it's completely true. My great-grandmother was the same way, from what everyone tells me, and those who knew her say I'm practically her clone. Either way, for the past year, I've been seeing this thing in my dreams. No, it's not sleep paralysis, whenever I see it, I'm fully aware of the fact that I'm dreaming, but I can't wake up. The dreams usually put me out in the woods, somewhere dark, and I'm in the middle of this clearing with a lake in it. About 30 feet away in the tree line is this absolutely massive shadow figure, and I'm talking about 40 or 50 feet tall. The trees are taller, but this thing almost reaches the top of them. I call it a man, but it has no real shape to it. You guys ever seen those Fresno Nightcrawler things? It's shaped kind of like that, only completely black, with these massive deer antlers sticking out of its head and these disturbing red eyes. When I say red, I mean, like, pure neon red. They don't glow very brightly, but they are bright enough to make him noticeable. He never gets any closer to me, but I can always feel his presence when I'm in those woods. Recently, however, I've started feeling that presence outside of my dreams, and it started to freak me out really bad. Along with that, I've started seeing an entity that looks like a little girl, I wanna say six or seven, that has no features except for these big eyes. I only see her in the corners of my eyes at night, but the other features I've gotten are, a tight black braid going down her back, a strange white dress, I want to put it in the late 1800s or early 1900s, and what look like bruises. I have no idea if these things are connected, but it's freaking me out. If anyone has any thoughts about red eyes or the girl, I'd really like to hear them. I live on the eastern side of Ohio, near the Appalachian Mountains. When the foundation of my house was being built, in the dirt that was being moved, they found an insane amount of arrowheads. I live on a rather large hill and have around 45 to 50 acres of land. My family had an archaeologist come, and he said he had never seen this many arrowheads in one single site before in his entire career. It is believed that my house was dug into a burial ground or that a war took place long ago in the Native American era. To further this, on my property are old railroad tracks. It is unused now, but in the 1800s, it was used frequently. According to my town's records, a train crashed and blew up here killing a group of men on board. So it begins. The first night all started a year ago, last month. September 25th, 2021. A group of my friends, me plus five others, were at my house for a bonfire. It had been something we usually do, and just to say, we do not drink while we have our fires, so we are all in our right minds. To start, I got up to put some more wood on the fire. As I was doing so, we all thought we heard my mom yell for us, hey. So, I called her, and she claimed she was lying in bed watching TV and had never gotten up. We played it off as our minds played some tricks and we were just hearing some things. As the night went on, we started to run out of firewood. Me and two others walked down to the bottom of my hill to get some more wood. When we came back up, the other three friends were gone. It was just a joke they were playing on us because that's just how we are together. We think, oh, just let them go for a little bit without trying to look for them, and they will eventually get bored. A few minutes go by, and the three of us who weren't hiding heard this blood-curdling, screeching scream off in the distance, for reference, you can see a lot from the top of my hill. We immediately get up worried and nervous that it is one of our friends. We look into the distance that the scream is coming from, and we see nothing. The screaming stops and then starts again. We start yelling for our other friends and calling their phones. All of a sudden, two of them pop out and start asking us questions about why we look so freaked out. We explain this to them while still wondering where the last one of them is. The last person comes out, and we begin to explain to him. An expression fell onto his face, and we knew he had something to say as well. As he was alone, crawling up the side of the hill, 
getting ready to scare us, he heard someone ask, who are you? In a man's voice, another reference, there is a house that my family is renovating about 50 yards from the top of the hill. He was between the hill and the house. After telling him that no one lives there and that it is owned by my family, he immediately freaks out and says, if no one lives there, then there is someone out here with us. We all run down to my house and immediately tell my mom about everything that we have heard. We go back out and search the house that my family owns to be sure there is no one sneaking in and living there. There was nothing, no one. My friends leave a few minutes later. I go back to the top of the hill to get my car that I drove up. As I'm up there, I hear screams. As if someone were in pain and screaming. Moaning and groaning very loudly. I get in my car, drive to my house, and quickly go inside for the night. This is just the beginning. Night 2 was just one month later, on October 23, 2021. The same group of us were out there having a fire, minus two. Plus my dog. Two of my friends couldn't make it that night, so there are now four of us and my dog. Curious, we decide that we are going to try to be a bunch of badasses and go out and explore my woods. The woods we went to are located on the opposite side of my hill from where my house is. This chunk of forest takes up 80 to 90% of the land my family owns. We start a little fire, go through the game plan, and then we walk. They are all following me with flashlights because they obviously do not know my land. I know every single inch of my woods because I used to spend a lot of time back there. As we are walking, one of our friends asks, what's down here? So, I take us down towards the railroad tracks, where we hear some brush breaks. Thinking it's just a deer or an animal, considering we are in the middle of the woods, we brush it off and just keep walking. I take them down into a clearing. It is a place that leads back to the top of the hill if we keep walking straight. It is a deep but small valley type area. All of a sudden, as we are walking, we all hear the loudest boom noise that we have ever heard. It was as if someone had let off dynamite in the tree lines above us. My dog even jumps. We run about 50 feet before resting and trying to figure out what just happened. At this point, we are in the lowest part of the valley area. I shine my light towards my dog, and he is running back to the top of my hill. In my mind, that scares me because he is a German shepherd who has killed coyotes. I tell my friends to keep an eye out around us to see anything. Me and one other see a set of blue eyes in the opening behind us. They move left and disappear. Then come back again, moving right. At this point, we are all looking at them. We watched this happen two more times, and then the eyes didn't come back. Scared that whatever it was was on the move, we ran back to the top of my hill. We took a break for a while. I decided it was best to leave the sleeping bear alone. Eight months later, in the summer, I have a fire. There was a lot that happened between two of my other friends, and our foreign exchange student went back to Spain. That limited the group to three. Me and two others are just chilling out around a fire. We have done this around four to five times now, and the same thing happens every time. We hear faint whispers but can never make out words. We hear the brush moving. We hear cows that sound like they should be 20 yards away, yet the farthest farm is around a mile away. Cows, along with other weird animal noises, none of us can make out, and one of my friends is an avid hunter and knows his stuff well. As odd and as weird as all this seems, ever since a year ago around this time, I have been getting deja vu. It scares me every time I get it because when I do, something bad happens. Just some examples, my uncle died the next day, I had to put down my dog the next day, my girlfriend's mom has a heart attack, my girlfriend gets into a car accident, I break out into hives, and many, many other examples I could list forever. Along with the deja vu, I have a reoccurring dream. Long story short, as I'm walking in my woods, two of my friends disappear, and there is this black outline staring at me. As I continue to have this dream over and over again, every time I do, I wake up in a sweat and see the thing that was in my dream in my room. Just staring back at me. I can hear this thing whispering, but I cannot make out the words. After a few seconds of its presence, it goes away, and somehow I can go straight back to sleep. In addition to the nights at my house, me and a group of friends decide to go to the famous Egypt Valley. Out to Louisa Fox's grave, death location, and Circle Cemetery, one of the oldest cemeteries in the area. I'll spare you the details of all of those areas, if you want to know, look them up, they are rather famous. Anyways, we go out to these locations, and as we are walking back to our cars, there are handprints on the one I was riding in. My friends swear it wasn't them. One set of hands was freakishly huge, and the other set was very tiny. We compared sizes, and none of our hands fit the ones on the car. Ever since all of this, my life has been rather horrible. Very few things have gone well for me. Whether it be the death of loved ones, the death of a friend, the death of a pet, 
sickness, injury, or vehicle accidents, holy SHT, as I type the last sentence, I get deja vu. I can't take this anymore. It's getting so hard to wake up every single day. I hate sleeping for fear of dreaming, and I hate being awake for fear of deja vu. I don't want anyone else to hurt me because of me. My friends and my family believe that a native spirit haunts my lands. Some of my friends believe that it's the men on the train, the train crashed one week before the time of the second encounter in 1886. My family and I are religious. I have tried to get closer to God and try to be a better Christian, and it has helped. My dreams went away for a little while, but as time grows closer to the second encounter, it's getting worse than it's ever been. I have no idea what to do. All I want is some answers. Or for someone to tell me I'm not crazy. From a young age, I have always had a sixth sense for the paranormal. I remember lying in bed and seeing some dark mass standing at the edge of it, watching me while I stared back. In the same house, I had an imaginary friend who often attempted to lure me into the busy road I lived on to play with her. I have had a lot of scary encounters. I could talk for hours. These tweets specifically have made me fearful of ever going back onto a mountain that is located within my town. Let's take it back to the summer of 2017. My then best friend and I would have sleepovers every weekend and would often sneak out to visit our boyfriends. One night in particular, my friend Kelly told me that her boyfriend, Drew, had his mother's car. At first, I was hesitant about even going out, I didn't want to get in the car with someone who didn't have their license or permit. I didn't feel safe. Kelly assured me we wouldn't be getting in the car, and we would stay at the park all night like we normally did. Me, trusting my best friend and not my gut, reluctantly agreed to go out to meet them again. When we arrived at the park, we all decided to hang out and mess around, as teenagers do. We all played on the playscape, sliding down the slides on skateboards and seeing how fast we could go through the whole thing without falling or something. It was a lot of fun, like it normally is. Hours passed, and there's only so much you can do on the same playscape. We were bored. Callie and Drew decided that they were going to get in his car and go back to his place to have some fun while my boyfriend Mike and I stayed behind at the park because I was still so against getting in the car. Mike and I hung out for a little bit on our own and talked about life and everything we could think of for an hour until Callie and Drew returned. We met up with them in the parking lot to talk and see what we were going to do next. Mike and Drew were talking about bringing us to the cabin, which was abandoned and a little bit off the trail. They really wanted to go, it piqued my interest, but I knew something was going to happen. I knew this was their attempt to get me to agree to go for a ride. I pulled Callie aside and said. I know what y'all are trying to do, but I am not getting in. Callie was my best friend. We talked about how badly we wanted to have an amazing summer many times, so she skillfully and finally convinced me to get in and relax. I was perfectly fine the whole way there, I calmed down and was enjoying myself. We were pretty close to the mountain, it was about a five minute drive. Drew pulled into a parking lot that was for some random building, and we got out. I was still okay. We walked across the street, and I felt fine. To get onto the path, you have to cross a bridge that isn't really in the woods, and even then, I was still fine and dandy. As soon as my foot landed in the woods, my heart dropped. I knew something was going to happen, and my intuition is pretty strong. I held my boyfriend's hand tight and told him that something was going to happen, and I had a bad feeling about going in. He brushed it off as just nerves, but I knew it wasn't. We arrived at the cabin. The feeling in my stomach was indescribable. I knew something was in there. I didn't want to tell my friends, I was already labeled the buzzkill for not even wanting to go in the first place, and I definitely didn't want to look like a weirdo. We stepped in, and I heard Drew whisper to Mike. Don't let Lee see the wall. Mike quickly urged me to go up the stairs, but I looked, and my eyes almost popped out of my skull. There was blood, fresh and dried, on the wall right next to me. I backed out, and they all told me it wasn't real, so I gained the courage to walk back in. I knew they were trying to calm me down. The interior of the cabin was massive, it was a beautiful home. I tried not to look around too much, I didn't want to scare myself. We got upstairs, and I looked over the edge. The upstairs had railings all around, so it was a slim hall, but you could look down into what I am assuming was the living room. When I peered down, I heard a loud thud from across the house. Angry. I screamed, and Mike pulled me into a hug so I would relax again. I was shaking now. We need to leave. I kept saying, but they said we needed to just try and stay for 10 minutes, and if I still felt weird, we could go. Over the edge, there was a massive pile of just random things. I couldn't make them out because it was so dark, but it was strange. We went into one room and I didn't feel such a heavy presence in there as I did the rest of the house. I counted the minutes and finally told my friends I wanted to leave, so that's exactly what we did. 
I was last to go down the stairs for some reason, and as soon as I walked out of the room, we all heard the bang from across the house again. I froze on the steps, as did everyone else. I felt unwanted. Uneasy. We were not welcomed in this house. Come on, Lee, Mike whispered to me, grabbing my hand to lead me down the stairs. I moved slowly, and I felt something coming over me. All of a sudden, in my left ear, I heard Mike loudly whisper. You're such a baby. Just give up. I looked up at him. I was hurt, but he wasn't even facing me. He was looking down at his feet. I stopped again, and he reassured me that it was going to be okay. It wasn't him talking to me. It sounded like him, but with a malicious edge. There was no way it was him because the stairs were narrow. I would have felt and heard him come up to me to whisper in my ear. I was shocked. We finally were able to leave, get in the car, and go back to the park, where I blocked out everything and tried to enjoy myself. I had forgotten about these events until recently. Fast forward to now. Winter of 2019. My now best friend, Amanda, and I decided, like usual, to have a sleepover. Her and I have been best friends for about four years now. She knows that when I think something is going to happen, I am always right. We were hanging out, just laying around, when she finally received a text from our friend Carly, who had made plans with us earlier to hang out. She was coming to pick us up. We got ready and waited for her outside. Nothing interesting happened for the first half hour. We drove around town and talked about what we should do when Carly told us we were going to go to a spot her and her other friend liked to hang out at. We started to drive toward the other side of town. Carly would not tell us where we were going, which didn't scare me or anything, it just made me angry. Suddenly, my surroundings became all too familiar. We were on the mountain. I went quiet. I was trying to convince myself that nothing was going to happen. It was only the cabin, and we had already passed where Callie, Drew, Mike, and I parked before. Nothing was going to happen. But I couldn't ignore the feeling I had in my stomach. She pulled into a parking spot and cheerfully told us to join her. I looked back at Amanda. She looked nervous. I repeatedly said I didn't want to go into the woods. I told her I didn't like it, and I had a bad feeling, but surprise, nobody listened. Amanda kept reassuring me and telling me it was going to be okay. I looked at her and said. I have a bad feeling about this, and you know how I am. She nodded and told me it was going to be okay. I got out of the car and began walking into the woods. I felt it in my stomach again. It didn't want me here, whatever it was. Amanda and I linked arms and kept talking, trying to keep the mood light. I didn't want to scare her anymore. We made it to the top of a steep incline, and they sat down, but I stayed standing. I was looking all around me. Hearing things moving in the woods that surrounded us. They talked, and I would occasionally butt in with a joke, but I felt awful. Suddenly, when I was finally feeling relaxed, I felt four hands on my arms and my legs, attempting to pull me towards the heavily wooded area next to me. I was terrified, but I love Amanda, and I didn't want to scare her. I sat down and tried to compose myself. The feeling of hands all over me went away, and I started to feel fine again. About 20 to 30 minutes had passed, and we finally decided it was too cold to stay out any longer. We all stood up and began to head out of the woods, down the hill. Carly and Amanda were a little bit ahead of me, but I felt fine. I still had an uneasy feeling, but I knew that I was going to be okay soon. Then, in my ear, I heard Amanda's voice telling me. Lee, just give up. I was shocked. My whole body went cold. I stopped in my tracks. I looked up and said, bitch? Clearly offended. But Amanda was in front of me, very far in front of me. I tried to shake it off and forget about it. I just wanted to get in the car. I went to lift my leg, but I couldn't. It felt like a heavy weight was holding me down. It wanted me in the dark, where I was vulnerable. I called out to Amanda and Carly, who stopped and waited for me. I was finally able to move down to them and get in the car. I was fine. The feeling went away. Last night, I finally brought it up with Amanda. She told me she saw dark masses moving in the woods behind me, but nowhere else. I will never go back to that mountain. Something is out to get me. I know some people may think that this is all made up and is a bunch of baloney, but I know it was negative energy, it wanted me gone. 